I just heard yes. Alyssa, I'm sure you've gotten a roll call done at this point, correct? Correct. Good. Uh, we, uh, at this time, I'll accept a motion for to approve the minutes from May 1st, 2017. So moved. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. That one passes. Uh, Oregon Revised Statute 221.770 requires two public hearings to be held uh, to be held to hear from citizens regarding the use of state revenue sharing funds distributed to the city of Staten. The purpose of this hearing is to hear public testimony on the proposed uses of these funds. Before opening to the public, we'll hear we receive a staff report from someone. Oh, Andy. No, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, Budget Committee members, thank you. Uh, on the state revenue sharing, uh, what you'll see up on the slide here is <coughs> up on the wall is a summary of the various state shared revenues that are budgeted and what their intended uh, use is. Uh, the city receives cigarette tax, liquor tax, state revenue sharing. Uh, we'll receive marijuana tax, although we really have no idea what that will be at this particular point in time, and then the state gas tax. All monies from these uh, sources except the state gas tax go to the general fund, and the primary purpose of those is for public safety. Uh, the marijuana tax is specifically for public safety purposes. The gas tax is used and must be used for street maintenance. Uh, the total amount uh, you know, to be received or projected is uh, 680500 which represents 3.05% of your uh, city's overall total budget. This is the state gas tax number 337. Pardon? This is the state gas tax number 337. This is the state gas yeah. tax. He probably doesn't know that we have a ballot, ballot measure for This has nothing to do with the local gas tax. Yeah. Yeah, local gas tax is... Yeah, in your budget is zero right now since it doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay, Andy. That's all you got. Okay, I'll now open the public hearing. If there's anyone that would like to provide testimony regarding the proposed use of the state <clears throat> revenue sharing, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Good? I'm good. Okay. Just a question for Andy. <clears throat> a question for Andy? Can we do that? Um, I guess you, you could. We're in the middle of a public hearing. Or do you want to wait? It's, unless you want to. Yeah, quick wait question. On. Go right ahead there, Mr. Mayor. Andy, do we. I thought there were two parts of that cannabis tax the part that was dedicated to public safety, and then the, a part that just came to the city in general revenue. Right. Yes, sir, and that's uh, correct. So this would be dealing specifically with the money that the state collects and right. is responsible for on their tax and then allocates. The local 3% tax would be separate and it's included in your budget and it's not subject to the hearing. You can use that money however you want to use it. It's not subject to the state, state uh, requirements. Well, they're collecting all of it though, right? <laughs> It, but they're collecting it for you and then submitting it to you. The 17% tax that they have, right. they go through a, a fairly complex formula that they're still working on to ultimately distribute it back to, to cities. Okay. Thank you. There being no further public testimony, I'll close the public hearing. And uh, now we are Andy again as the uh, interim finance director giving us a budget overview. I I had, excuse me, Mr. Chair, can I? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I also had some questions about the last slide. About the public hearing? Uh huh. About the last slide right there. Yeah. Okay. So, everywhere that it says public safety on that, is that a state requirement? Is that why that says public safety there, or is that something that we've done at some point? The reason it's listed in your general fund, the primary expenditure in the, uh, that fund is public safety, your police department, municipal court, that type of thing. That's does why it it's have listed. to be, does that have to say public safety there? Or is that, was that our choice? Uh, that's my choice, just writing it in, in that you're spending the money in that area. It's, 
Okay. Is that we're currently spending the money there. It's not a requirement that it be part of public safety. Yeah, correct. With the exception of the marijuana tax, which is directed towards public safety. And street maintenance. Okay. And street maintenance as well. And, and then the, the street building. maintenance yeah. is also dedicated to street maintenance. Okay. And so do do we know it where it says public safety if any is it just general public safety or say like if um, if it were the marijuana tax it would be something that might be related that money might be used like for drug treatment or drug in education or like cigarette tax is that used for smoking cessation or is it specific to what the taxes is uh, collected for yes. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me clarify on the where it's saying general. That's general purposes. It okay. could be anything inside the general fund. It's, it's not. It's yeah. not allocated for something. Okay. Right. right. Yeah, it's very broad in its uh, interpretation. Whereas the marijuana tax is specifically public safety, which could be you know the things that you mentioned, Councillor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Rich, did you want to respond? It, it, it's very specific to what it can be used within public safety because there is other monies that can be used the, within marijuana that are specifically designed set aside for that. This specifically states uh, in the law that it has to be used for the enforcement of marijuana. Okay. And if I'm correct, Andy and Keith, that's just simply general fund dollars coming in from the state. In your presentation, we will see where all those dollars go. Correct. Thank you. So please continue. So Andy and I are going to play a, a little tag team back and forth. Um, as we get in the budget summary, we've been going through council goals. John Morgan with the Chinook Institute has been helping us, and, and we need to get them formalized. But what staff try to do in this budget is to um, take the items that were discussed and listed as goals and to put them as part of this budget. So we just wanted to address this right now of, of funding to address what we consider council priorities. Of course, it's the committee to go through this and, and decide, but the items that came up were comprehensive economic development study, improving street infrastructure and upgrading transportation master plan, an increase in code enforcement, and a re revitalizing state and historic downtown. So as we go through the budget, we just wanted you to be aware that these were stated council goals and, and items that we'll talk about as we go through this. And with that, I'll let Andy take over the budget summary here. Okay. Your total budget is $22.3 million. You're beginning the year with nearly $9 million in beginning fund balance is our uh, projection. The spend uh, you know, program is about 14 point six, uh, with 11.8 of that net of transfers, uh, resulting in an ending fund balance. You know, spending revenue all came uh, as authorized uh, with 7.7 .7 million. The 7.7 .7 million dollars, uh, when you look through the fiscal policies that the council adopted uh, last October, that'll be adequate to meet the fund balance uh, guidelines that uh, were included in that particular policy document. <coughs> is that a plaintiff's document or is that cost and concrete? The 10% contingency, uh, contingency, contingency is is not cast in stone anywhere, uh, but it's a separate issue altogether. But the 7.7 .7 is 10%? Uh, no, 7.7 .7 is, is just whatever the total of all the different funds are at the end when you get done with all the appropriations. In terms of a spending authority, you'd be having $7.7 .7 million left. Yep, well above the 10% number. Yep. Okay. The, <clears throat> we've continuing on with building the information to go through a longer range financial planning process. And I think that, you know, last year we initiated that. We were able to work through some five year uh, forecasting, initial ones for the utility funds and the general fund to get a sense of where those might be. Uh, and we'll need to, with this update, we'll continue to uh, enhance that. Uh, resource summary <coughs> your property taxes representing, uh, oh, thank you for doing that. And we end up with two shows. I'd like to see what's ahead of me as well as what's up on screen. So Keith will have to take care of the clicker for me. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be messed up. 
So property taxes represent about 2.3 million. Uh, intergovernmental is down from the prior year. Uh, it's just you had a large grant that was budgeted uh, that we'll talk about in stormwater later. Uh, your charges for services are up slightly. Um, and you know, we'll talk about uh, that as well. Franchise fees are fairly flat. Miscellaneous the same. License permit uh, should probably just be wrapped up in miscellaneous. And then uh, internal transfers is increased over the prior year, and we will go through and explain uh, the nature of, of that. Uh, this year, like last year, there's no debt proposed to fund uh, you know, the various operations uh, capital outlay programs. So total current year revenues are at about $13.4 million. On the taxes and fees, your property taxes are uh, proposed to be assessed at the full taxable uh, permanent rate of $3.32.8. And uh, also to levy the full special levy uh, amount of 60 cents. Uh, we're projecting a 3% increase in the taxable assessed value. Uh, we had a little bit higher projection last year, I think a little like 3.1. That didn't materialize. And in looking at the average over the last three years, it's right at 3%. Uh, we're hoping, you know, certainly would anticipate that number should start to go up with uh, some of the real estate development that is occurring. Uh, we are proposing rate adjustments of 3%, reflecting the uh, CPI uh, change. This is also consistent back with the fiscal policies that are looking at having incremental rate adjustments on an annual basis rather than waiting for a significant rate adjustment to occur you know, at some date when you need to do a major project or what have you and then realize that you haven't haven't set yourself up to do that. Uh, this is also it really to, so you're not losing ground. And we'll show you here in a little bit again, you know, some stuff we showed you last year in terms of where the city is with respect to its rates and charges and some of the limitations that's uh, you know, going to have on you and, and your capacity to deal with issues as you move forward. Uh, SDC is the inflationary adjustment in this is a slightly different measure. Uh, the engineering news record is a construction cost index, and that's uh, at 3.7% relative to the other adjustment I mentioned earlier. Uh, Population-wise, last fiscal year you saw a three-tenths of a percent. We're projecting with seeing the other development that is uh, pending right now, seeing that uh, tick up a little bit. Any questions on the revenue side of things, uh, you know, big picture at this point? Okay. On the expenditure side, you're seeing personnel services go up. Uh, a couple of things, uh, you know, there that we'll talk about in a minute with respect to the, you know, the, the changes and in, in what's driving that. Materials and services is up uh, slightly. Um, you have a few consulting engagements, but otherwise it's primarily inflationary type adjustments and then real experience that you'll see out in the wastewater and stormwater funds, I believe, are the, you, you'll see a few significant type differences. And then capital outlay mentioned earlier, uh, you know, 2.3, which is down from last year's number, a little over 3 million. And debt services, uh, the same as the prior year at uh, 1.2 million. Andy, what is our bonded uh, indebtedness? Uh, get to that in just a second. Next slide, or here in a couple slides, okay? Uh, yeah, so for personnel, uh, summary, um, what we're going to note here is, is code enforcement, um, in addition of 0.7 FTE to 1.0 FTE, we had 0.3 FTE uh, budgeted this year as a council goal of, of more code enforcement. Um, that's where that increase is coming from. In addition, we're taking over the pool staffing, so that's an additional 8.1 FTEs. And then we've reduced the wastewater treatment plant operator um, 1 FTE, so that brings our new total to 55.2 FTEs proposed for the 17-18 budget. Keith, quick question. If we go up to 55 or more than 50 threshold, it has some implications for us? Uh, potentially it does. Um, known as kind of the uh, things with the American Affordable Care, uh, Affordable Care Act, it's a possibility, but we were trending pretty close to that number to begin with. Um, and at this point, that has been put on hold at least till 2020. Um, and we'll see with the current political climate what it means, but it is something we have to monitor over the next few years, depending on what happens in Congress. Keith, isn't it a little unusual to reduce at, at any level of this town? Uh, 
somebody going away? I mean, well, somebody somebody took a, a job with a, a different location, and we had evaluated and looked at our comparable cities um, with wastewater plants of a similar size, and determined that we were we had more staffing than, than others. So um, we knew when we had an opening, we probably would not fill it. So when that happened, we decided not to fill the position. Okay, is that the case with several other bureaus? Several other bureaus. Several city areas, library. Departments. Well, we, we are always looking at what the, the FTEs are. The library had a full-time position uh, budget for this year and decided not to fill it. Um, they're they're <coughs> keeping that in the budget, but not not at this point filling it. We're proposing using savings from that. Um, and we'll get to that, of course, uh, for, for improvements to the library. But it is something we always evaluate every time uh, we have openings to see if it's something we should fill or not fill. <coughs> Built into your budget would be these following assumptions. So there's cost of living adjustments that are contractual uh, for police and ASME, and then management non-represented historically, and maybe my policy also includes a similar uh, cost of living type of adjustment. On your health insurance premiums, uh, we're including 5% at this time. We've got some preliminary information from the insurer that uh, it would be in that neighborhood. That's potentially could be above that. We've seen other plans go above that particular number. Uh, retirement, I'm showing you the total numbers down here just so you have a, a sense of, you know, the, the impact that uh, retirement has. But Bruce is the police officers, right? Right. Yeah, the city plan uh, last year was 19.5 percent, so it's 24.3. So you know that's 4.8 percent. That's on every dollar of earnings. So you know there's a, a direct cost of roughly five percent. Would there be any implications if the city for new hires were to go to PERS? PERS tier one, uh, two, not tier three. It won't obviously. be cheaper necessarily. The the PERS tier one, tier two, is at 30.7. The the Opsburg is you know, roughly 24% uh, relative to the city retirement plan at 24.3. It's my general opinion that you're better off to be in your own retirement plan to be rather than to be in the state run system that is politically run and has been for years. It's and, a football, we all know that. And yeah. you know, I think you know, you having your own system, your own ability to manage it and make adjustments to the various factors that play into the retirement. What is uh, tier three PERS though? Pardon? What is current tier three PERS, do you know? Uh, I don't know the tier three PERS rate. It's it's not one that uh, you know we're we're dealing with right now. At the risk of time, if we could hold questions until the budget review section, let Andy and Keith get through their overview. I think that'll speed things up a little bit here. Please, Andy. Uh, next slide. So to get to the, you know, the debt summary, uh, looking at you know, beginning number of 2016, you totaled 16 million. You know, at the end of this year, you'll be at 15.4. Uh, there's reductions of 675 uh, in the outstanding obligations this year, leaving you about 14.7. And then we have one additional slide I want to show you. So that's the only debt that the city has is both in you know, the major utility funds and they're funding major capital improvements, treatment plants primarily, and, and some uh, major related uh, improvements. Uh, debt per capita, you know, you're trending you know, down to where you'd be under 1900. Uh, at the end of this fiscal year, that's a very low debt load. Um, you know, to see numbers upwards of three or four thousand or more is not uncommon. Um, debt coverage ratio is where I have, you know, in debt capacity is where I have some uh, some concerns in, in why the need to lay out, you know, a longer range uh, financial operational plan for your major utilities. You know, you're seeing your water uh, being at a, a 1.23. If you were to go out and try to issue debt, uh, you know, You'd be looking at a minimum of a one and a quarter uh, coverage ratio. So to be at 1.23, you really have no debt capacity there unless you're willing to do what you just did, which is to issue full faith and credit obligations, which puts your general fund at risk. Can we see the last slide quickly again? Pardon? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and then. You know, uh, uh, questions come up in terms of, you know, should we maybe pay some of this debt off earlier? Uh, the 
the problem with that is you really can't. Uh, all three debt issues have no prepayment ability until uh, into 2023, I believe, is the first one. Uh, they're long-term obligations that uh, end up with, you know, they have prepayment clauses, and those earlier maturities are ultimately not subject to prepayment. Then maturities after that, you could prepay. Um, you know, just go on record for you guys now and just say, uh, looking at the terms that you have with those uh, obligations, they're longer-term debt, and they're basically issued at 2% or less effective yield. And my advice as a finance person is you get 2% money, you probably don't want to pre be prepaying that um, unless something radically changes within the marketplace. So, you know, 2% money is very inexpensive money and, and it's, you've gone through some restructured financing already, which is, I think, really helped the, the debt load and, and minimizing you know the impact on rates the other thing and you look at these improvements one of the things within you know any business model would be to have people that are consuming the the goods paying for the goods at that particular point in time and debt on these assets is spread over 30 40 years which is you know the useful life of those particular assets that you know if not longer for those Uh, capital summary, you know, we mentioned 2.3 million. You can see, you know, the biggest chunk of this is in your utilities and streets. Uh, you've got uh, a little bit of equipment, vehicle, uh, roof repair, that type of stuff you'll see in uh, the various funds and then in <coughs> some technology investment. But the vast majority of this, uh, you know, right at, you know, close to $2 million is going to be in your utility infrastructure. And one of the things we you know talked about last year, we in, in, until we go through some studies, it's going to be hard to update these amounts for streets, parks, and stormwater. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about stormwater master planning here later. Um, but the FY budget numbers there, you know, the capacity, and this is in those particular funds after you pay operating costs debt service and so forth, how much money ultimately is left that could be spent on capital on an ongoing basis. And these are the numbers. So water, where we're at right now, it's well below, you know, 200,000 is, you know, I think in my judgment with the information that's there, it should be at least that kind of money available every year to be spending on capital. And you're well below that number on sewer should be in the 600,000 plus range and you're well below that number. So those are some indicators that suggest you know there's some challenges out there from a funding standpoint on you know on the utilities uh, streets again we don't know that number in parks and stormwater we'll we'll get a better idea of those as we move through master planning just to quickly go through some slides that give you an idea of where your city is in its charges relative to a number of others this is Information that goes back to June of 16, the city didn't change, city of state and didn't change your rates. So where you are on the on you know, that blue line is going to be, you're going to stay there, and all the other lines are going to, you know, particularly the black and the green, are going to creep up just a little bit. As most entities in the state, you know, having done this for about five years, is, you know, they you know go through an incremental annual increase. So your single-family residential, your initial charge is above the average, but then uh, your consumption rate is well below the average, and ultimately the more water you use, the <coughs> more affordable it is for folks that are in state. Um, on the commercial two inch, you're right at the average for the base charge, and then well below <coughs> the average on the consumption rate. <coughs> and on wastewater, you have a flat rate charge, and this is a mix of, you know, there's about 49, it's right at 50% of the utilities, 63 that we have in the database, that uh, charge flat rate versus charging uh, a base plus consumption. You're one of the 50% that charges flat rate, and it gets out to about 10 CCFs a month, which is where you end up with a break even relative to the average of the other communities. Uh, the average Winter use is going to be in the four and a half to six CCF range. Uh, you know, commercial, 
uh, wastewater year above that, you know, you kind of through a, a short phase there, you know, stay with the average and then your consumption rate eventually overtakes that and, and goes higher. On stormwater, your <coughs> rate is uh, below the, the the average here, just uh, slightly, I think the average is right around $7 and you guys are at the 550 range. And on commercial, again, you're, you're well below the average uh, on what you're charging. On your street utility, you guys set the, the bar on the lowest of the communities that are ultimately charging at $2. Um, So, I mean, just to summarize, you know, with water, stormwater, and street fees, you're well below, you know, the average of, you know, what these other communities are ultimately charging. Uh, the one utility where you're above would be in the, in the sewer area. So we wanted to highlight the items that we would consider, you know, more discretionary uh, projects for this year, the, the key ones. So economic development strategy, which is an economic development plan, the transportation master plan update, the facilities and needs assessment, the Friends of Old Town Staten, uh, the Putney Park master plan, uh, the code enforcement, and then the Jordan Bridge repairs. So those would be the items we listed as, as major items um, that are more discretionary projects. Keith, some of those are five thousand dollar items, and some are hundreds of thousands, right? Yeah, I mean, we didn't we didn't code this based off of cost. We just co coded on one of the things that we listed as more discretionary projects that were key that we wanted to point out. Okay, uh, we'll uh, start with the general fund. I mean, maybe this uh, chair would be if there's broad questions on the overall. Just you know, before we get into it, if you want them here, Andy, I'll let them in. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, I have one question, and uh, and we talked about the street maintenance fund has 135,000 to fund an update to our transportation master plan, and I guess my thoughts are: is what's this master plan for? Yeah, maybe what I would suggest. I think it's a great question, uh, but I think what we're trying to do on the big picture is deal with you know the any questions related to the, the big, we're going to go through every fund and talk about each one of these things and that might be a, a time to hit up a question that's specific to a fund. But if you've got any questions on the bigger overall policy sure. type questions mm -hmm. like. Andy, we do and I agree with Tad because I have a lot of questions in terms of the funds. And Tad, that's one of my questions. Along with the ninety to $100,000 for the economic development plans to plan. So it's a good question, Tad. Yep, it's a good question. I'm just suggesting the timing of that might be within the fund sure. discussion, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's hey, fine. Andy, on the uh, general fund, we're looking at, we're reducing the vehicle replacement fund, which is a general fund item, right? The general fund category or not? No. No? Okay. Okay. So, sounds like we can just move right we'll into move the funds through. and... Mm -hmm. If you'd like to go through each fund, yes. Okay, absolutely. Kick some tires. This is Andy's show. <coughs> Time's up. Okay. <laughs> All done. He wishes. So, Mayor, Council, and Budget Committee members. <coughs> Your State and Police Department is a full service, 24 hours a day police department. We are staffed with 13 sworn and certified officers and 1.8 civilian employees. The 13 officers are made up of a police chief, a lieutenant, two <coughs> sergeants, detective, school resource officer, and seven patrol officers. Two of the seven are spe specially trained and regularly assigned to motorcycle patrol. The civilian employees work in the records section of the police department and point three FTE in <coughs> law enforcement. We currently have five volunteers, volunteer sworn reserve officers, and one civilian volunteer. Our goal is to have 10 volunteers. 
We've been at a full, full staff for the past several years, which allows us to keep an officer in the role of a detective to work on a larger, longer duration cases, such as large scale drug investigations and child abuse cases. This past year, we worked on several major projects. We're in the process of implementing phase two of our electronic ticketing program. This allows officers to digitally write traffic citations and warnings and submit them directly to the court and records department. We have seen significant improvements in efficiency and accuracy by using this system. We implemented the equipment replacement program to gradually, gradually replace items over time, such as computers, tasers, LIDARs, ballistic vests, and body cams. We plan to continue this plan each year to reduce the need to replace all of the equipment at once. This past year, we also started the process with Marion County to create an emergency ma management mitigation plan, which is a plan to work toward reducing damage during natural disasters. In the area of crime prevention, we continued several projects to interact with the community better. We continued our Coffee with a Cop, National Night Out, and Junior Fishing Derby. In the schools, we increased our canine presence and held mock trials for the social studies classes, as well as numerous other presentations and activities. By using a grant obtained through the Oregon Community Foundation, we were able to implement a youth cadet program. Last year, we also moved the part-time code enforcement officer from planning back to the police department and obtained a volunteer who also helped with code enforcement. As we, as we do each year, we reevaluate our priorities. We set them based on community needs, police advisory board recommendations, and council goals. These priorities are providing essential 24-hour police services, maintaining and supporting a detective position, maintaining a school resource officer position, creating positive community connections, maintain, maintaining and improving our reserve program, and our enhanced traffic safety. We plan to continue to improve and work toward these key priorities. This next slide will show you some of our activities for the past three years. Our police activity has been pretty consistent over the last few years with a slight increase in investigative incidents and traffic enforcement. <coughs> we are also seeing a large increase in arrests. We have seen a large decrease in our volunteer hours, which is due to several of our volunteers obtaining full-time positions in other police agencies. We are currently in the process of hiring more reserves. In this year's budget, we plan to improve our code enforcement program to meet council goals. We will do this by increase, increasing the hours of the code enforcement officer from 0.3 FTEs to one FTE <coughs> position. This will allow us to utilize a code enforcement officer 40 hours a week versus the 10 hours a week that we did before. We also plan to continue, continue to implement phase two of the electronic ticketing program so that all of our patrol cars and, and one of our motorcycles will be equipped with it. We plan to continue to update equipment through our replacement program for items such as the LIDARs, computers, tasers, training equipment, ballistic vests, body cams, and a patrol vehicle. This year, we will also start the process of upgrading the patrol radio system over the next couple of years. Another major product we will, project we will start working toward is moving the police department to being paperless. The municipal court did this last year, and we will start to work to do so at the police department this summer. A large, point, a large joint project we are working on with surrounding agencies is to replace a very, a very outdated records management system. This is a jointly owned system of writing and tracking police reports called Priors. Since 2004, the Priors group has been, been putting aside a portion of our yearly fees to pay for a large portion of this replacement. The RFP for this process is currently started and we hope to choose a vendor in the next several months. There are two major changes to this, this year's police budget. The first is the increase to the code in the code enforcement position from 0.3 FTE to one. The second major change is, was a $15,000 grant for the youth cadet program. The initial grant was for 18,000 with $3,000 of that being spent in this past, in this current year. Do you have any questions? There's a $56,000 allocated, allocated for a vehicle replacement? Yes. Couldn't, and I was talking to Keith, could we find uh, two or three Ford Tauruses and save half that money somewhere? Yeah, there's a $9,000 used Ford Taurus, as I recall, is 
that Keith mentioned, right? The, I mean, there's very little with your budget that has a question. Right. It's, um, the police vehicles are very specific, and they're built specifically for, uh, for police, and so they're uh, built uh, more robust in sure. the end of carriage yeah. and the engines and things like that. We have a police interceptor, but usually... So, what's yeah. that? Yeah, I know, yes. Yes. Uh, Tauruses in the past, uh, some agencies have tried to use those, and they the really don't hold up. The Tahoes. Yeah, wasn't there, Keith and I were talking, wasn't there a $9,000 used Tahoe available, Keith? They've, they've looked for Tahoes, that's correct, I mean, for the command staff um, to, to use and to utilize and to replace some of the command staff's vehicles. Um, yes. So they're on the lookout for something like that at all times. I mean, rather than buy one, I'd rather buy three or four, and I think you have an old car that doesn't reflect well on your position. So. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called it a granny car. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we can, we try to find a used vehicle. Finding a used patrol vehicle is, uh, it can be very difficult uh, because generally patrol vehicles are uh, pretty, pretty well used by the time they're done with them. Mm -hmm. uh, some, there's a few agencies around that, uh, that they get rid of their vehicles at about five years, uh, whether they are uh, done with them or not. And if we can find, when we find those, we usually try to snag them up, which is the one that uh, Keith was talking about. It was a, an area sheriff's office that was getting rid of uh, a vehicle that uh, that we'll try to pick up and use for that purpose. Uh, but to put those into into uh, uh, I guess not guarantee, but to you can't plan on those. We can't plan, can't plan on those. those. Yeah, Correct. that's fine. I just want to have more impact than one shot. And then the other thing was uh, eight thousand dollars in firearms training. Your budget has no questions really. But there was an eight thousand dollars firearms training budget. Yes, that covers a lot of our ammo costs. Okay. The majority of that, that's where that gets spent at. Other questions for the chief? I have a question on the police section for Alyssa and Keith. And it's more of a technical question on the charge of the uh, budget committee. I noticed like the cadet program that is new to a year and a half-ish, um, it doesn't have a line item in the in the back section in the, in the half Sample. Do those have to line items have to be approved by this committee? Is that something that can be put in down the road? Yeah, the the council or this budget committee and the council, for that matter, aren't approving on a line item basis. You're going to be right, not the line item. Let me rephrase my question. Those numbers, in order for us to approve a budget, that line item doesn't have a number. So if if at the end of these two or three days. Will there be a number provided? For example, page three of your, what seems to be a partial sample of the actual budget. He, he's talking about the account code number. Right, yeah, and the account code number is, yeah, it's a vehicle. bookkeeping function on our end. I, I understand right. exactly what it is, but right. back to my question. And the answer is no. So it, it will not be provided and we don't need one. Correct. Okay. So all these blank line items will never have a number? They'll end up with a number and they'll be done, but it won't be in the next three days before you approve the budget or before the council adopts the budget. So we'll approve it pending those changes? No, we'll go ahead and set up the account codes once the budget's ultimately approved. Okay, other questions for the chief section? I got, got, got a couple. Chief, um, <clears throat> I'm just looking at overtime. You're trying to get it match more what you're currently spending, saying it's doubling from last year's budget. Is that correct? It's going from budget 26 to 43,000. <coughs> last year's, you only had it budgeted 26,000. <coughs> it's estimated. Over see right here. So your overtime estimate was lower. I mean, your jumping it up going up back, but the back, actual back to actual closer 22. to the more actual right correct okay and then <clears throat> special events you're not going to budget for that it's not going to get covered in your overtime just, pay just in our general general operations okay Spe special events those were generally um uh the officers or the reserves <coughs> would work uh community center events so if some of our security events uh, either here or at the Jordan Bridge, and those okay. are next to uh, to nothing that they're doing those anymore. Okay. A lot of that has to do with uh, some <coughs> employment laws, 
Okay. We used to be able to hire our reserves, uh, and then they could come in and work those special events. We're no longer allowed to uh, to pay them directly. Is there, is there anything, I guess, just overall that you've put in just with the potential increase with the flips in that for funding or bringing in any additional law enforcement that we may have to bring in because of population increase in that four or five days? Have you thought about any budgeting for that? Because that could be an increased cost. Uh, we, we see that increase being taken up in the in the overtime and the overtime. Uh, as far as with uh, adjusting the, the rest of the week's schedules uh, lieutenant button uh, put together a schedule already exactly how the number okay. of officers that we need so we think we can handle it with that, okay. with that Great. Amount. excellent question other questions for the chief what section are we doing next andy Let's go to plan. Good evening, planning department. I am the entire planning department. You get the whole department here for you tonight. Um, so I am the only employee. The, uh, there is a transfer from the planning department into the public works admin fund that pays for a portion of the public works administrative assistant slash permit clerk salary as she provides support to the planning department as well. Uh, no changes are proposed in personnel for the planning department. Uh, the, the, inc the significant change in the planning department's budget for next year is in the uh, materials and services category where we are proposing a substantial increase for contracted services for uh, hiring consultants to develop a economic development strategy for the city. There was a question from somebody earlier in the evening about that. What I envision the economic development strategy will be is up, essentially updating the economic development chapter in the city's comprehensive plan. And it's budgeted for 95 to 100,000? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you because I was talking. I'm sorry, that's $100,000 roughly? Yes, it's $95,000 is included in the budget for that purpose. And we will be hiring consultants to look at what are the economic opportunities uh, in the city and what are the city's goals and strategies for taking advantage of those opportunities and how do we implement those strategies and getting that in, incorporated into updating the comprehensive plan which is really based on now five or seven year old information. Um, the, this year the city received a relatively small grant in which uh, to, to work on the Wilco Road industrial area. That work is, should be wrapped up by the fiscal year, but will sort of has led into the idea for the need for a broader strategy for how do we promote economic activity here in the city. What did they do on Wilco Road? The, so far what's been done is the city engineer has done a, a, an analysis of the cost of making infrastructure improvements, the roadway, the shaft road intersection, extending sewer and water service to west of Wilco Road where there's about 75 acres of vacant So nothing actually land. happened. They nothing has city. happened. The okay. grant was for engineering and analysis and, and then once we have those cost estimates, a plan for how do we finance them. Okay, I was just saying, because I worked there and I haven't seen them do anything, so. Yeah, no, no. And Wilco Road is a county road. Yeah. So that ties into it as well as, as is Shaft Road. So we have to coordinate anything that happens there with Marion County. And finally, the, the planning department will continue to work on issues around downtown revitalization. <coughs> I've been involved in the formation and, and getting the Friends of Old Town State and up and running uh, and we can envision continuing to to work on that issue. 
quick question for you. On, if you go back to that last slide, you talked about the economic development strategy study that they're going to do. It's proposed. Or proposed. What? What? And I'm sure there's been one that was done prior to this. You said six or seven years ago. No, there was not one that was done six or seven years ago. The current comprehensive plan contains a chapter, but it was it's pretty minimal as to what it looks at. So this would be really a, a more substantial analysis of the available land, the available buildings, the constraints upon their, that development, and also working with the Planning Commission and the City Council to develop the local goals for really what, <coughs> what type of economic development do we want to see, or do we just want whatever happens? Right, okay. And once we define those goals, what do we do to achieve them? Dan, in your proposed budget, that's thirty-five hundred dollars for advertising. I realize it's a tiny sum, but what is that? The the department occasionally needs to place <coughs> classified ads for public hearings, public notices cool. for public hearings. So. Those public hearings are usually <coughs> caused by land use applications. Uh, there's just some indication of what's been going on. In, in calendar year 2015, there were 11 land use applications and three, three in city initiated land use files, code amendments type things usually. Last <coughs> year, there were 18 land use applications and four city initiated files. Um, so far this year, I'm up only to number three, so those things may come and go in waves, but I generally perceive that we will continue to see more development activity in the next year or two than we have seen in the past five or six years. So in summary, personnel is unchanged. You're, you're stuck with me. Contract services are to fund the economic development strategy. That is the increase, and we'll continue to work with friends <coughs> downstate and to try to get the downtown area revitalized. And that was five thousand dollars for friends of downtown. That's five thousand dollars is in there mm -hmm. to support the friends. Any Question. other questions? Questions for Dan. I got one question. It's not <coughs> budget minded, but the friends of Old Town State are they going to? We've got Friends of Old Town, and it looks to me that they want, they're going to be the ones that are supporting the survey no. issue, right? No. Not supporting, not paying for, but I mean, they're going to be the ones that are going to be the emotional backers. Are they going to follow what the survey says? What, are you referring to the economic development strategy? Yeah. <coughs> no, I don't, I, I don't want to say I don't see any relationship between the two. The economic development strategy will be looking at the city as a whole. Okay. We'll be looking at industrial, commercial, and other, whatever that may be. And Friends of Old Town Staten is really focused on Third Avenue. Fox is a nonprofit focused well, on. Well, I'm just saying it sounds like, well, if the survey says putting money into that's a boon, are they going to um, continue to take resources towards that? Or if it's, a, if it's basically going to be. We don't need to do the survey. Yeah. We don't have to approve the survey. I'm just saying that. It, if the city says, or if the survey says yep. revitalizing Old Town is going to cost X, Y, Z, and that looks to be cost, not cost effective, is it, are the Friends of Old Town going to continue to rally around it? Well, it's hard for me to say what an independent organization is going to do in the future. They are an independent organization. Okay. So, but I, I envision the economic development strategy will be laid, will be laying out a strategy for city government to achieve the goals that the elected and appointed officials of the city government set out for the city. Okay. Other questions for Dan? <coughs> Thank you. Oh, you want the clicker? Is that yeah. what you were saying? 
So we have uh, several funds here that I'll help go through. Community Center, um, we're enjoying the Community Center right now. It's rented for dances, weddings, receptions, parties, meetings, concerts, and other events. It hosts the Senior Meals Program during the week. Um, last year it was rented 111 times and is supported by the Public Works Administration. <clears throat> There's really no major changes to this year's proposed budget um, for Community Center, but I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Two quick questions. The, 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 the $35,000 for moonlight maintenance is for all the city properties, right? That's correct. And then where does the rental income for the 111 events go to? It's not on the budget or however many were rented? It goes into the general fund. Yeah, mm -hmm. Community Center line item 49504 in the general fund. Cool. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the right one? No. Is it self-sustaining? Is the community self I would say um, it is not. Can we market it more? I think what to do with the community center is, is a question. It's it's now nearing 40 years old. It's, it's starting to get sort of um, in date, dated in need of, of an update. Um, I think the needs assessment will be a good a good tool to look at this individually and decide you know what its long term purpose or use could be or how we could try to utilize it more. Has the uh, usage of the community center been affected by the uh, no free usage for? charitable organizations policy um, there is no policy that says charitable organizations can't we do re do reduced fees um, for organizations that are nonprofits that are working inside the city okay. um, there are some other organizations that pay a reduced fee or pay um, for just depending on their location what the purpose is the community total reach and goals but there are quite a few that we do um, waive our fees for. There was some in the past that I would say would not meet the criteria of a, of a non-for-profit. Um, so there is a few that, that are now, you know, we go back to paying, but we do have a policy in place that we utilize and it's fairly common for that to be. And now that I have the rent in the right place, it's 46,150 um, is where it's located in the general fund. What was the rent? Uh, 22,000 is the estimated for 1617. And what was the actual for 25? Or 15, 16, the actual was 21,637. We budgeted 20,000 and we're estimating 22,000. That's <coughs> about a third of the way to self sustaining. It's. That'd be correct. Other questions on the community center's budget? Municipal Court, um, we have one FTE as a court clerk and a contracted judge. A judge is, is hired by the governing body. Um, last year we had 40 court dates, 57 trials, and 1,015 processed cases. Um, they are partnering with the police department for the e-ticketing program, uh, which should prevent um, a lot of mundane time that the staff spends in entering and keying in tickets and other information, so it should make that uh, much easier and faster in terms of, of the process and there is no um, significant changes but I'd be happy to answer any questions on the municipal court. Questions on that section? So the city council or the governing body um, Again, we're, we're proposing a funding of $6,000 for council expenses, of providing each council member $1,000 to attend training and conferences. And there is the League of Oregon Cities dues, and also the um, continuation of the $5,000 for the community grant uh, program. And there is no uh, major changes to this program, but I'd be happy to answer any questions on this as well. Any questions on that section? So continuing on for, for the administration, here's our staffing levels. 16, 17. The administrator's goals are, are defined by the governing body, so what we've gone is the draft 
of the three major items that were identified um, as the goals of the City Council, which is address the street maintenance, economic development, and what we classified as neighborhood preservation. So address street maintenance, we identified these goals, which was transportation master plan update. Hey, what's the budget for that? $135,000. Thank you. Explore additional funding solutions, uh, review street maintenance fees, schedule other funding, partnership resource leverage, and to review our street standards uh, to determine if we wanted to maintain our current street standards. <coughs> our goal, Rick? What was the budget for the last two items? <coughs> Is we have budget? no specific budget for okay. um, the last two items that would be just part of um, staff's responsibility of our daily task. Cool. Goal for economic development, uh, economic development plan, code review, and to support friends of Old Town State and where the uh, items, sub items we put underneath this goal. Is code review part of the code compliance officer or not? No, code, well, it can be part of that as well, but it's, it's more to look at our codes in terms of economic development policies to make sure that they're current. Um, and that there is intuitive or um, burden-free as we can we can make them. Basically, it's looking at your codes in terms of economic development, see what you can do to make it as easy as you can, within reason, for development to occur. Dean, you want to add anything on that? No, no, that's good. <coughs> Final goal that we have identified um, for as part of this draft. We, to go to the council is, is what we call neighborhood preservation. Housing strategy, which is looking at new housing that we're referring to as legacy housing. Explore a rental house, housing license. Expand code enforcement <coughs> and uh, to do a housing inventory. So you have, you'd, you're proposing that they'd have to have a, li uh, a rental house? The person who owns rental homes would have to have a license in order to do so? That's correct. It was How a discussion, discussion that was part of the um, discussion the governing body had at their last goal setting it was made the list of, of goals that they stated. Um, there are areas that have a similar type thing. I think what the goal is is to make sure our rental housing is is adequate and properly maintained. But that would be a policy discussion for the council to ultimately determine what they what they did or did not want to do. I, I, so I say explore at this point because it'd be their determination if they want to move forward with that and what they want that to look like. Andy, is this an appropriate place to talk about the city administrator's goal for um, contingency fund increase from 5 to 10 percent across the board or not? Yeah, we'll be getting to that here momentarily. Okay. Um, performance measures, ordinances that we've completed, resolutions we completed since last year, meetings and work sessions, including tonight and the town halls that we've had. I'd like to <coughs> improve our performance measures, so it's something that we'll talk about in this slide right here. Strategic issues is to continue to enhance our budget document, um, to enhance and grow our financial <coughs> forecast and help us make informed decisions, and that's related to our operations, our capital investment, our debt, our rates, and other. Internal job controls, our internal, internal controls and best practices to finish our job descriptions, performance review, updates, and to create meaningful department performance measures. Um, as we're going through this process, I'd like to continue to enhance that and to have meaningful and insightful performance measures, and so we'll work on improving those. Our accomplishments this year, we awarded the GFOA Distinguished Budget Award for 1617. Comprehensive fiscal policies, which were adopted in October of 2017, or 2016, I'm sorry. Updated retirement plan assumptions and funding plan in October of 16. The new City of State and website and the Charter Review Committee. Some of the major changes for our proposed budget this year is funding to replace outdated computers and office furniture for City Hall employees. Um, we outsourced our utility building printing and made changes to customers who pay online. We changed utility account collections in efforts to increase efficiency and effectiveness. And our um, second iteration of a five-year financial forecast for general and utility funds initiate same for parks, library, and street funds. We're continuing to try to build longer-term financial forecasts um, for all of our funds. I'd like to see them extend beyond five years to 10, 15, and even 20 years. One of our big um, changes this year is our continued change is the contract for the IT services to include the pool. Uh, it's the second year of consolidation of our IT network and website. Uh, continued investment in, in professional services and technology to address system <coughs> efficiencies, improve efficiency and effectiveness for staff, security, and email. And these costs will be recovered through transfers from benefiting funds. 
but it is an ongoing, um, pretty significant behind the scenes project we're working on. <coughs> so with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions on the administration. Questions on administration? Absolutely. Um, minor number, Keith. Uh, banking fees went from zero to 6,300. Do you know why? It's uh, 53130. Right, yeah. To address that question, yeah, you know, we consolidated all the charges for banking <coughs> fees back to the general fund under finance rather than spreading them out amongst a number of funds. That's why it's a new line item. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the general fund administration. It's in the back. It's in the budget section in the back. Right here. <coughs> other, <coughs> pardon me. Other okay. questions on the general fund administration? Contingency fund, but we'll get into that. Let me tell me. <laughs> Keith, I had a quick one. What's the flexible benefit administration? What's that? I don't remember that one. What is it? Flexible benefits administration. Five one nine five one nine three six. It's the fee that we pay for our flexible spending plan. Oh, the flex plan. Yeah, the one that has nothing in it. Uh, thank you. No, it went from an estimated fifty-four thousand to eighty-three thousand. Oh, that's, 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 that's the retirement plan. plan. Thank yeah. you. You went from 100 to 200. Perfect. Yeah, and so you know, I right. got gotcha. you. It's built in that all these numbers round to the nearest hundred. So if it's $49 and less, there's nothing there. It'll end up being $45 or whatever as an actual expense, but all the budget for personnel and all the line items throughout, it's just rounding them to the nearest $100. Or nearest thousand when you get up above, you know, ten, fifteen thousand, and then to the nearest ten thousand when you get above a hundred thousand. Because again, it's just a budget. We don't have exact numbers, and you start budgeting exact numbers. You go nuts. Yeah, there's a software maintenance fund. Is that the new utility building software for thirty-one thousand five? It does not have an audit trail number. What, what line item are you looking at? I'm uh, sorry. General fund, no line item, right above property taxes. Yeah, the Cassell software, again, that's all of your financial management systems, utility billing, the uh, accounting software, the budgeting software, the payable software, the personnel software, all those things yeah, come with an annual maintenance uh, licensing fee. But they didn't in the past. Pardon? They didn't. Well, they, yeah, we haven't been doing it for free in the past. No, they were allocated and spread over all different funds. It's and consolidation. Consolidated them. Yeah, so to see how much they're spending throughout the whole city as opposed to this department spends fifteen dollars. I, I, I agree with the concept. Yeah. Other questions on administration? The only other question was office supplies went from eighty eight dollars in twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen to twenty thousand dollars proposed. Is that again a consolidation? No, I would, I would say twenty thousand dollars is a hell of a lot of staples. <laughs> no, it is. I think what this is is, is more of, of trying to accurately reflect where items are being spent and where the, the budget items are, are coming from and how they're classifying them. So in the past, there was just kind of a, to be honest, a, you know, counts the operating supplies. So we were trying to separate some of this out and be more accurate in what we're actually identifying um, for what our spending is to classify for what it is. Other questions on administration? Keith, I do have one last one, and sure. it's, a, it's a positive one. Why do we, uh, the estimated 200,000 in legal fees, contract legal, to drop to 75,000? That's wonderful. <laughs> well, Why are we saving we, so much money? We do believe we're, we're towards the end of uh, a long uh, legal battle, so the expectation is that will be resolved um, shortly, so. Very good, but why even less than the budgeted of 106 something? But we you were still in the middle of that? We budgeted some, anticipating that there'd be some continued costs that what we didn't anticipate is that it would continue throughout the entire year. Great, keep this up. Well, there's a note that the general fund administration budget has gone from 470 and changed in 1516 to a proposed budget of a million seventy two. If you look through, it's... Which is more than double, but I, yeah, I, I look and, yeah. Well, just to explain, since we're on camera here, what we've done is we've taken, and this has been a general theme that we've tried throughout, which is to take the items and who they're managed by and to put them in their actual accounts and to put it under under one fund instead of spreading them out amongst many. So if you look at the 16, 17, you notice a lot of new line items that have moved over, which accounts for that, that change. Great. Right. Other questions on administration? Hmm. So 
I guess uh, I'll continue on just to kind of do that. I mean, this, I just answered this, this a second ago, but transition of recognizing expenses and departments responsible for activity is complete. So what we're really doing is trying to budget the items at the, at the, at the level of the department that's responsible for, um, for handling those. Um, which is going back to Mark's question a second ago of, of some of those changes. And then, you know, for instance, uh, Dan's increased budget for, you know, proposal to do an economic study because he'd be the one managing that project. Uh, <coughs> only transfer from general fund to other funds budgeted and non-departmental. Streetlights. Uh, there is a slight budget increase to account for streetlights and new development. We have begun, we started this a few years ago, and I've reached back out to Pacific Power to, um, again, be looking at maybe trying to do some LED um, lighting to see if we could save a little bit of cost. All the street lights in the city are maintained by Pacific Power, and um, we pay for all of those. We just want to note there is a, a adopted street light fee, um, but it has never been adopted, so currently that sits at zero. It's a it has been adopted and it's never been enacted? Council, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Council, okay. Council adopted it, but there was never any fee associated with it. Okay. Hey, wait, this is, I think there was. My neighbor's complaining that uh, Pacific Power isn't paying him enough for power grant at San Diego Water Control. Perhaps the city can look at him for power. So we just street yeah. Yeah, we yeah, used to have it. We don't anymore. Yeah. Why was on power? Your streetlight budget is around 115000 The street fee that you currently have, $2, is generating right around 91000 And you know, so you're you're generating less money on the street fee than what it's costing you to, to keep the lights on, on the street. And it's, it's ultimately being born, you know, in your general fund, you know, as a, a fairly... It's a twenty-one thousand dollar discrepancy. Forty-one thousand. It's not really a discrepancy at all. I mean, it's just a point of reference in yeah. terms of you know the money that's coming in on the street maintenance fee is at two dollars. And this is kind of give you an idea. If you were trying to implement a fee mm -hmm. for a street fee, which the council's enact or adopted but has never <clears throat> put in place, you'd need at least two dollars to generate the revenue that's needed to pay for this. Now, you say $2, because when I look at my water bill, it says street fee, and I get a $5 bill on my commercial property. Uh, commercial is a little different. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, single-family residence, $2. Okay. I don't even look at that bill. Andy, uh, just for the record, uh, that street light fee was actually used, but it was terribly unpopular. Back in the time when there weren't any extra fees for anything, uh, life was free ride and we had this this is back probably in the 80s late 70s have, 80s but it it wasn't popular at all and so the council at some point dropped it right. but it's still on the books i think there'll be budget questions for the street light section okay. uh your other requirements section uh we budget a 10 percent contingency rather than five um, in at the end of the day the contingency line item versus unappropriated that I've done a lot of budgets where in fact my preference you know as a finance officer for you know working with councils is to put a hundred percent of the money into contingency and the reason being is it gives you you know the the most control over what you want to do how you do it and so forth when you have money in the unappropriated and you get to a point where you may need it for whatever purpose. That's going to necessitate before you can spend the money legally. You need to bring back the entire budget committee and have a, you know go through the public hearing and so forth. The ten percent number is within your discretion to be able to do that from an ORS perspective. In this budget, first of all, we're going from five percent to ten percent in one fell swoop. Secondly, we have contingency funds on many of the departmental light items. In addition unappropriated funds in addition to the contingency fund jumping from five to ten percent or from zero I'm to not 10%. sure I'm following you for instance in the wastewater uh, let's look at um, well but let's let's, stay, let's go back okay, to okay. Yeah, just on, to, sorry, let's go to contingency fund let's first of all stay yeah. on this section okay thank you on contingency fund it's not a council decision to jump it a hundred percent from five to ten percent we're taking the budget, increasing the budget, $2.2 .2 million overall. 
4.1 million dollars overall of a 22 million dollar budget because we doubled our contingency funds no not at all no the, the contingency is just so we understand is a rainy day it, it's it's not a rainy day it is the dollars that have not been allocated to any expenditure program generally speaking they're carried over to the next year for future spending and ultimately part of the ending fund balance so what is the unappropriated budget balance the unappropriated number is it it's balance? sealed off can't be spent whatsoever even if you wanted to spend it unless you brought the committee back together again and got approval to spend it and the contingency that's in wastewater is irrelevant as it relates to the general fund. We'll talk about wastewater when we get there because we're going right. to Yeah, this is just one particular okay. fund. Okay, but, okay, why do we have an unappropriated fund balance of, for instance, in the proposed budget right now, uh, general fund, we're looking at that page, of 383000 and a contingency fund of 439000 and change, 823000 total in unappropriated or contingency funds. That's $900,000 just sitting there. Right. And you're, you know, well, policy wise, go back to that's the minimum number from a policy standpoint you need to be having. The policy that the council adopted says that they will not borrow money in the general fund to operate the general fund. Which you need to have enough money, which is a roughly that number that you're seeing there at the end of the year in total unappropriated and contingency is about 4.7 months worth of working capital mm -hmm. in property taxes, and that's using the burn rate excluding property taxes, that's 4.7 months. And you get property taxes at about 4.6 months. So you're right at the minimum number you're gonna to wanna to have in your total other requirements between contingency and unappropriated. I wouldn't be bringing you a budget, you'd be out of compliance to bring you a budget that was any less than this number. So this is right at the minimum, and we'll talk in terms of on a sustainable basis some things you're going to you know have to be thinking about in order to start generating additional revenue and or have to reduce some of the programs that you have going on now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't isn't the contingency money used sometimes in interim between when tax uh, property tax money comes in until. Doesn't it fill that gap sometimes, and then it's replenished back? Yeah, yeah you, but you never spend any money out of contingency. I mean, it, it's just part we're of still the overall our contingency. Yeah, we're spending it. You know, all the expenditures are going to come out of the accounts that are authorized to be spent. The general fund cash balance may go down to a very low number in the you know, lower six-figure type numbers, but it's not being spent out of contingency. When the revenue comes back in through property taxes, the cash balance will go back up. The contingency, you don't spend any money out of contingency. Taking it to a global level, in one budget, we're going from a 5% contingency last year to a 10% contingency this year, right? No. What's that say? Uh, this is just in the general fund. We're going from a 5% to 10%. The other funds are just other about one cent. Okay. Yeah, this is just on this general fund. Okay. Andy, if I may, it, this might help clarify. You, you've moved to from the contingency that has gone up but the unappropriative went down so that those dollars can get spent easier the money should the city change. need to this is what we classify right, right? increases that's, that's flexibility right. for the yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a classification yeah. issue not a yeah. okay yeah, it, it, right. it, we'll get change points. correct okay other questions on the other requirements yeah. Yeah, again it's very important to understand <laughs> we're you know as a city you're at the bottom of you know where you can go with your overall yeah. contingency and unappropriated you, you're going to need to start trending back up yeah. 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 so that was it for the general fund library okay Looks like somebody's squirreling money away somewhere. That's different. So this is our proposed staffing for this year. It's the same staffing level as we had this current year. So some highlights over this last year. So we have a slight increase in our circulation. We've provided programmings for all programming for all ages. That includes two children's story time and dance programs a week. Um, Eleven 
preschools, kindergartens, and daycare um, sites that receive outreach story times. We provide an Oregon author series. We do book clubs for kids and adults. Um, we do programming in the summer, summer reading programs for all ages, and many, many more programs. So some changes. So the big change for the library this year is that as part of our library consortium, um, we've moved to RFID tagging our materials so that if you, um, it's just a different way of um, managing our collection and a different way of checking in and checking out our collection. And what it will do is that it'll provide us with some more tools to, um, to manage that. So with this system when complete, and we're not quite complete here, and the system is not complete, um, we'll be able to do like a true inventory of our collection because you can see what the catalog thinks we have and what we actually have and gives us some more tools for managing our collection. We've also continued to develop our programming. We've started a Read to the Dog program for children and um, are getting ready to have our second bad art night for adults, which has been really popular. Our big project for, in the proposed budget is a capital project for to replace the roof. So um, library funding includes 162,500 from the local option levy. That's the current year number for that. 185,400, which is a proposed transfer from the general fund, and then $83,000 that we get reimbursed from CCRLS, which is our library consortium. The library is also really um, blessed, I guess, or fortunate to have the support of the Friends of the Library, which support us with the used bookstore and by having book sales, and also from the foundation, which has events like the Father Daughter Ball. And the foundation also helps us pay for our outreach person. So, do you guys have questions for me? I do. Okay. It looks like our total budget for the library is roughly $953,000 personnel, roof and everything, right? So. And dividing that by um, the, the population, it costs, what defines, what is a library visit? When I go to a parks meeting as an advisor, a member of the advisory board, because I'm a council person, is that a visit to the conference? Your board? entry into the library, counts as a library visit on the state statistical report. So if we look at the number It doesn't of count as a library checkout, but it counts as a library visit. visit. So if you're 80,000 visits divided by $953,000, it comes out to roughly $80 per visit is what the fund for the library is. Okay. But the national average is 36. Okay. Um, the other concern was that the library endowment fund in there, I wish Hank were here for this, because he and I were talking about this, we're supposed to have $25,000 a year, and it's, it's pennies, but it's dropped to 6000 They have an agreement to decrease that and, and, and contribute the remainder to the endowment. And they, that's an agreement that was signed before I, before I came. So this year, they contributed 17500 and they put the, the, the to into fund. the endowment. And what happened to other library outreach things? For instance, in fall 2015, you had an evening beer and wine thing, which mm -hmm. seemed to be mobbed and was well attended, and I certainly enjoyed it. So that event is run by our foundation, which mm -hmm. just finished the father-daughter ball. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that they want to talk about that quite yet, but that's something that they ran for the library. Mm -hmm. That's not the, the next thing that they're talking about doing is doing a 2020 lunch, but um, that is on their radar of things that they've done in the past and what we'll probably want to do again. So what else, what are your plans as director for increasing the library's presence in the community or getting more visits, reducing the cost per visit by being more involved? I mean, our library is a gem to the community. Library is important. If you mm -hmm. came into my house, you'd see volumes of books. Mm -hmm. My library card is in my wallet. Um, but what can we do to, I mean, it's more than three times the national cost per capita for a library. So if you also, if you look on our comparables for statewide things, our program attendance is higher than rep cities close to our comparison level. So one thing we need to do, we continue to do is we need to continue to do, develop our programming. We need to continue, we're really blessed to have that position in the schools to be able to go visit those schools. We need to continue that relationship that we're going with the schools so that when the kids come in, they see, they see people and say, hey, we're, I know them already and all of that stuff all of those activities will help build that. Will help. Because we have a marketing. More than a Cadillac of a library now. So, well, I think so too. Yeah. So. Any budget questions for the library? Yeah. Pardon? Mm -hmm. no, no. 
He, yeah, he said he's got one okay. more. I didn't hear him, so I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's uh, one other question with the little resource. No, I got the I got them all. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. I am uh, Lance Ludwig. I'm the director of public works for the city. And I have a number of funds tonight that I am going to bring to you, first of which is parks. Uh, as you can see, there's my park staffing. We have, we have it does not change this next year. We have 1.7 FTEs. 0.7 of that is for our contract for mowing of the parks during the summer times. It's actually seven months worth of mowing. Uh, accomplishments for this last year, we're completing the, uh, we completed the Pioneer Park uh, Rehabilitation Project. We're uh, replacing the uh, Pioneer Park pedestrian footbridge. It should be done by the end of May. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been out there recently, but the actual bridge is up. We have sidewalks yet to do, and uh, I think it's going to be a jewel of that park. It's really a beautiful bridge. Um, and it does have a little bounce to it, so just in case you guys are missing the bouncy bridge. <laughs> we also pur purchased uh, 40 acres of parkland this last year, uh, 10 of which will be part of a, our stormwater detention facility. It's known as the Lambert property. Uh, the other 27 acres will be north of that. It's the Putney property. And uh, we're, we just purchased that, so it just sits out there now with a house on it and a field. This is the house that Dan broke into? That is it. Park strategic issues. Uh, the first thing I want to do is prepare a uh, park master plan for the Putney property. Uh, we're not going to probably be able to do a Ford like building. Oh, gosh. I did this last year, too. Excuse me, guys. <laughs> um, I don't really need this. Uh, you actually do because of the camera. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My voice is kind of booming, but um, we want to prepare a parks master plan for the Putney property because we're not going to be able to afford to construct the park that we want and that we think that the uh, taxpayers of Staten wants. So we are going to go after an OPRD large grant up to $750,000. In order to do so, you need to pre uh, prepare a presentation for them that's going to sell them on giving us money. So we're going to go out and get a uh, a master plan for the Putney property. We're looking at ballparks, ball fields, skate parks, uh, perhaps some tennis courts. It's going to be a regular sports complex. We're going to have some trails on there as well. Um, so that's what that money is for. Long term, we would need to find a funding source for the new park facilities. Uh, we have 40 acres that we're going to be working with. We also were just, uh, we just were giving three acres with the Wildlife Meadows Subdivision uh, as a park. Currently, as you saw, we only have one parks guy to take care of all our parks. That's really not enough. So we're probably going to have to look for some sort of funding to uh, maintain those parks. Uh, we're going to continue to work on the City Parks Master Plan agenda. Uh, we have an old master plan for the parks. That's what I'm using somewhat now to uh, start the RFP process with the Master Plan for the Putney pro uh, property. Um, we're also looking perhaps to move the community garden to High Street behind Brown House. Uh, I took that to uh, the Brown House members several weeks ago. They were all for it. Um, that we're having problems with the community uh, garden down at uh, Porth and Florence. A lot of the vegetables were being stolen. Um, I think, Mark, you can probably uh, attest to that. Uh, you'd go and you'd invest in the garden and you wouldn't get any fruit for your labor. So uh, we're looking at- I think I had a heck of a garage sale on Porth. <laughs> we're move, looking to move that behind the Brown House. They're very receptive. I think it'll look very nice. Uh, and it'll just add to the community over there. Challenges, uh, again, providing enough staffing and labor to uh, fit the desired levels for the parks. Uh, we'd like to procure land for, and easements for to complete our trail system uh, north of the city. Uh, that will be one of the things we'll be using the Putney property for, uh, to uh, expand those trails. With the Wildlife Meadows new subdivision, they have a trail going through there. It will be connecting, 
can connect up to the school property to the north, and that will also connect up to the Putney property, so our trails will be expanded there. We would like to expand them even more and get out to Golf Club Road at some point, and that's really what we're talking about there. Uh, and we'd like to continue to capitalize on our volunteer groups, uh, I serve the Boy Scouts, uh, and other groups to uh, help with the parks. Long term, we'd like to secure sustainable funding for the desired parks and recreational facilities. Again, there's probably going to be, we're probably going to have to do that through grants since we're such a small city. Um, so we look forward to doing that. And uh, we'd like to uh, secure funding for the park development of the property, property. And I think I spoke briefly about that. We're probably looking at an OPRD grant and other grants that we may find and come across. Changes. The city received three acres. I think I spoke about that briefly from uh, the Roger Roberts development, known as Wildlife Meadows. Uh, there's a pathway that goes through it. There's a pond there that we haven't uh, really decided what we're going to do. There's a nice pond on the site. Uh, we might be able to put fish in it. Maybe they make it a nice little park for the, some of the city to use or the city to use. And again, we purchased the 40 acres of undevelopment parkland north of the city. Performance measures, seven acres of neighborhood parks, 17 acres of community parks, 179 acres of open space. We mow, edge, all parks, around the libraries, daily cleaning of the restrooms, uh, maintenance of trails and paths, outdoor basketball and handoff. <laughs> Basically anything that happens in a park we maintain. Capital, we've got uh, $25,000 uh, earmarked for the Putney property master plan, $100,000 for the Jordan Bridge repairs. That's really a carryover from last year. We did not get to that project. Uh, and we have $20,000 for new parks equipment. Uh, we don't have any kind of detail what that's gonna be, but when it comes up, we need the money to replace park uh, equipment. And uh, down below, uh, the master plan, for the uh, Putney property is funded with SDC funds, so a portion of the development fees from Wildlife Meadows will be paying for that. Uh, operational funding, 206,000, well you can see, I don't really need to reiterate that, $10,000 in property taxes. Does anybody have any questions regarding parks? Mark. It's that sacred cow again. The uh, Jordan Bridge. Yeah. Um, are we throwing good money after bad? I know it's a community centerpiece, but it's not a real bridge. You know, it's a hundred thousand dollars, and I mean we've got a hundred. You know, what did Dirk and say a million here, a billion here, a billion there? We got real money. But I mean, it's yet another hundred thousand dollars. You know, is. What do people think? Isn't that the role of the committee to ask what do we think about things like that? I think that's a role for the city council to probably discuss before we do it here. We've got an earmark to go to city council and determine whether or not we want to keep that bridge. It's a, it's a great question. But that I don't think that's for me to decide. No, I, 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 yeah, it's not you. I think, uh, I think uh, the other uh, seat that you hold, uh, the city council, I think that's something for you guys to decide. Right. I do have a question that since Mark brought that up, sure. what does the endowment, does, it, does the, well, let me, let me rephrase that in two parts. Does the bridge still have its own endowment fund? I don't believe it does. No. no. It's dissolved, no. it's defunct. Yeah. Because it used to pay at least maintenance and a paint job every Fif couple of years. $1,500 a year, I think is what it was. It's all gone. And uh, we don't generate, I think, $6,000 through uh, renting for weddings and right. so forth. Right. Um, I mean, it, it, you don't have to be a math scientist to project that out, how many years it would take to pay for that bridge. But it is a community uh, mm -hmm. treasure, so Great bridge. it is really up to the council. Other questions? Priscilla? Yeah. So um, can you tell me what the goal of having the community garden is? The goal? Mm -hmm. um, no. <laughs> I mean, you and I have had conversations regarding this. I don't understand the goal. I also don't understand th that it, I, I think that people have a have a false sense of what it even is. And how much money uh, do we spend on it or do we spend any money very, on it? Very little, uh, Priscilla. Okay. It's really just the water. They pay $35 a, a year for water. 
whatever the water comes out to be. Uh, we have some parks maintenance to begin with. He tills the, the tills at once. Other than that, there's absolutely no. And then it just sits there like an ugly piece of property for the rest of the year, kind well, of overgrown. And and using the eye of the beholder, I, I've heard. So. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, I, I'm going to go back to, I, we got a little feedback somewhere? It's probably me here, I'm sorry. I feel if I heard Keith's message when he delivered the budget to us last week, our charge is not to decide what to do with these dollars. Our charge is to decide whether or not we want to approve this budget that's presented to yeah. us. So I love all these questions, but if we can stick to the presentation of each fund, we could get this thing done or lickety split. Please. I am finished with the parks. I will answer any questions if anybody has them. Well, thank you. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> cool. So the city is resuming operations of the pool. So what you're seeing is the, uh, we talked about this earlier, the proposed changes in our FTEs. And this is the 8.1 FTE equivalents we're anticipating for the staffing of the pool. Um, some strategic issues short term as the city assumes day to day operations July 1st. Um, you know, looking at the hours of operation, funding um, supported by a local option levy and, and general fund subsidy at this point. Uh, subsidy increased uh, 2017 2018 due to the change in the operations. And, and we know long term that the general fund will not be able to sustain uh, without reducing our funding for other services or without making this pool more economically viable. In long term, we know the pool is a, is a data facility and, and significant maintenance issue, so we'll need to look about what we want to do to address the long term viability of the pool. So the current challenges are the staffing operations, securing sustainable funding in near term and, and maintaining the facility. Uh, the opportunities are developing a master plan for the new facility to meet community desires. So this really is our chance for us to look at the, the pool from, from a community needs point of view and, and to maximize what we want it to be. Um, hopefully use that to increase attendance and, and increase revenues as well. Um, so the changes, of course, the change from the uh, operation of from the contract to the city, um, the budgeting for staffing and full operation costs and, and maintaining current hours of operations. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions we have on the pool fund. It's brand new. Let's try it. Chair, yes, sir. Can we take like a five minute or ten minute stand up break? Seeing we've been here for two hours almost. Yeah, I, yeah. Or how much further are we going to get? Yeah, let me ask Keith. What did you prepare <coughs> us for? How far did you want to get tonight? T tonight we can go as as long as you would like to go. I mean, we're prepared to go um, through it all if you'd want. If you want to end early and just you know come back tomorrow and know. At some point, we're going to make the time, whether tonight or tomorrow. Um, Wednesday, we may not have a quorum because I'm out of town and Hank is too. Well, if we want to get this done tonight, if you're all willing to get this done yeah. tonight, yeah, I could take a five minute break and mm -hmm. okay. just we'll go item by item and skip tomorrow and Wednesday. Anybody opposed to that? Let me throw it out there like that. I'm, I'm not interested in going on for another three hours. Uh, this hopefully won't take three hours. We're over halfway through. Yeah, I, my projection would be a, an hour-ish. Maybe I'm opposed to taking a quick break and Let's take 10 minutes pushing through. Could, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Scott. Okay. okay. Let's call this meeting back to order. Thank you, Scott, for that great suggestion. <laughs> and uh, we're on to the street fun. Have fun. All right, welcome back. Again, we're moving on to the street fund. Thank you, Alan. As you can see, we have uh, one FTE proposed for this year, which is unchanged over the last three years. Uh, boom, boom, there we go, sorry. Um, accomplishments for this last year, we swept 1,304 curb miles with our street sweeper. We gathered 1,100 cubic yards of material from those streets. Uh, we also put down 11,000 over 11,000 pounds of cold mix into our potholes in our streets uh, you may not think we did by the looks of our streets but we did um, 
Marion Street. Um, I'm sure you guys are aware we are paving that right now. In fact, we're going to start grinding that street tomorrow. We'll be paving half of it Thursday or Wednesday, um, and the other half when the weather cooperates some more. Uh, this last year, we continued our maintenance uh, within the communities, the street vision clearance triangle, uh, removing vegetation at the intersections. We're working with the code enforcement uh, officer this next year. Um, that'll be their primary goal is to go out in search of these and answering any questions from the community members um, that have issues regarding that. We also collected 175 pounds of food during our fall <coughs> yard debris cleanup. Strategic issues, short term, achieve maximum performance from our existing street systems. That's asking an awful lot, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to reduce potholes throughout the city. We're waiting upon the maintenance uh, or the uh, Marion Street Street Improvement Project <coughs> to be completed, and then I'll know what kind of dollars I have for potholes, remaining potholes in the city, uh, street striping, uh, gra uh, grading the, of the gravel streets, and so forth. Uh, but that will still, we still have time to do that this next year. Uh, replace old and decrepit sidewalks and increase ADA handicap ramps. I believe each time we go out and build a, or maintain, or excuse me, pave a street, we are replacing all or in, installing new ADA ramps to meet uh, ADA requirements. I think this year we've got 12 that we're installing for Marion Street. Um, Long term, secure funding source for capital projects, street reconstructions. Uh, we talked about, or you're aware of the gas tax vote that is coming up in a few weeks. Uh, we also have street fees that uh, I think uh, are gonna have to be discussed, increasing that fund uh, shortly, even if the gas tax is passed, if we wanna get our streets up to par. Challenges and opportunity short term, this funding for the streets, uh, we just don't have it. I've got 165000 on average to spend on street maintenance projects, overlays, reconstruction. Um, that's just not doing it. I'm spending 300000 this year just on Marion Street at seven blocks of street. So it's about a half million dollars a mile. For an overlay. We have 175 streets that require reconstruction. So you, 33 probably, miles of streets in this town. so you can probably double that cost. And that's only the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, continue to work with state and property owners to replace sidewalks that are just repair and uh, find, a, find a common level of service that people want in this community so we can start striving to meet those street needs. Long term, again, it's, it's all about financing. We've got to find it. We don't have it. We need it. And we need to find it. Changes, proposed gas tax coming up on May 16th. I hope you're all aware of it. Uh, I can't really say what to do there, but I think you all know. Evaluate the street fee rates and the equitability of it. Street fund capital reconstruction, the overlay for this next year is 250,000. I'll be looking at doing several blocks of Regis Street. That will be next on our priority list. We have 135,000 in for our, transport, our transportation system plan. This goes to Tad. Tad brought that up at the very beginning of it. Tad, what this is, it's a 2004 document. It was prepared in 2003 based on, and if you recall back then, development was out of, the, out of the world, out of this world. The projections for development, I think, were over 3% in Staten. So our transportation plan was really designed for that kind of uh, growth. Uh, projection, wild projections, five lane highways out on Golf Club Road. That's not going to come to fruition for the next 40 years, if then. So what we need to do is upgrade this transportation plan to meet current day standards and growth rates. Um, and in doing so, it, it fits along with the comprehensive plan. And I will look to Dan Fleischman on that because Dan Fleischman is our, our planner and it works with his planning document. So Dan, you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, not really. There's, there's, there's several major issues with our transportation system plan. One, as Lance said, it was adopted in 2004. The plan itself talks about review and updating every five years. Here it is 13 years later. We still haven't reviewed and updated it. 
Secondly, it was based on very unrealistic growth projections. Thirdly, it, it assumed that the entire urban growth boundary would be built out in a 20-year period. My guess is we have a 70 to 90 year supply of land in our urban growth boundary, not a 20-year supply. And, yeah. and third, thirdly, it did not properly coordinate with Marion County who maintains our arterial streets and has street improvements planned on Marion County roads that the county has said are not acceptable improvements. So those are the, the four things that, that point to why it needs to be updated. Can you explain to the people that may not know what our growth boundary is, where it goes to on the north? And the urban growth boundary on the north is Highway 22. So, so, yeah. so the golf club is within the urban growth boundary. Hilliers Ford is within the urban growth boundary. So we were projecting to have that completely developed by in 20 years, <coughs> in 20 years, and you can see it's been 10 years, and we're not even close. So it really needs to be reevaluated. Some of the things we do with those, uh, with these projects, is how that's how we also develop our SDC rates. You know how much it's going to cost to build this pro these projects out in the next 20 years, and we develop our SDC rates, which we charge developers to come in here and develop. So. It's also a tool for doing that. So it really needs to be updated. It's old. Uh, and again, I think Dan said it, it really should be looked at every five to 10 years. And now it's been 13 years. So that's why we have it budgeted. I guess, I guess my question would be is, is if we go back and, and we look at what our growth has been over that period of time, <coughs> the last one, which was maybe, like you say, not a reasonable uh, assessment of what the plan was going to be. Uh, we don't have the money for the streets anyhow so i guess my question is is what the hell difference does it make what do we need to spend the hundred and thirty five thousand why don't you take that hundred and thirty five thousand and use it on patching or overlay to to help maintain what we have now versus doing a study i realize the study's old and we need the study but come on i think that's what, a, what for that's a great question uh i think we can also use this uh, current transportation plan to go out federal dollars i believe a lot of these uh, federal grants and uh, grants and uh, loans ask if you've got a current transportation plan. We don't. We can't go after any other money. So we've got to look to the community to get that money. And obviously, at this current time, the community is not giving us any money. Lance, is there a way to do the system plan for less than 130? Yeah, I was going to. I was going to say something like that this is a this is a budgeted amount. Now, I think Tad's correct. We may be able to get it done for something less than that. But I would sure hate to say we can get it done for $75,000 and then come December, I'm going to the city council saying, well, guess what? I need more money to finish this. And then that makes, makes us look real bad. So I'd rather have money left over to push till next year um, than have not have enough money. I can completely concur with where you're coming from, but is there another way of taking, for instance, the 2004 plan and updating it with what really happened versus the projections in coming up with with her thirty thousand dollar plan, giving you another hundred thousand dollars, which is four blocks worth of overlay. Um, that is obviously what I think that that'll be looked at. That'll be within the scope of the RFP that goes out to these consultants. Can we use what we have already? I mean, that's gonna be the number one thing. That's the most obvious thing to do is to use what you already have in place and see if you can update it. And that obviously is what we're gonna do to begin with. I mean, that's really what we want to do. We want to save dollars. We're here to save dollars for the community, and that's what we're looking to do. We're not going to go out of our way to spend tax dollars, but we've got to do what's best for the city. And that's, we have this budgeted, doesn't mean we're going to use it. So, so will this be an independent company that will, firm that will do the, the, the system plan or, or review? Yes, we'll, we'll put a uh, request for proposals out to uh, traffic engineering uh, or, uh, consultants that do this for a living. And part of the scope will be to see if they can use what we currently have and update that. And that's what we're going to do. The stormwater master plan, that's exactly what we're doing for that. The, the folks that did it in 2005, they've given me a price to do that again just to update it. They have the model already. It's just a matter of updating the model and uh, adjusting the growth rates. And so I've gotten a somewhat of a reduced price for that. I'm looking to do that here as well, but I can't guarantee that will be the case. Do we want to use the previous company? I'm just asking because they're obviously not 
very accurate in their last well, well, you gotta remember, well, were you around in 2005? If you were around 2005, I was. I was an engineering consultant, and you could not. <laughs> I got to tell you, there was people coming in my door every day trying to develop land, all right? Oh, I, yeah. Lots and lots, hundreds of lots a year. One of my developers was doing 300 lots of development a year. <laughs> That's the kind of environment we were in. That's yeah. the kind of environment they forecasted here in Staten. Fortunately, they were wrong. 2008 happened. And, and it's not yeah. what the consultants forecast. Yeah. It's what the city told the consultant they should forecast, and the consultant, based on that growth, okay. rate, then said, here's what's going to happen. Okay. Those parameters were set by city staff <coughs> and the advisory committee. Okay. And I believe we hired that out to a consultant that specialized in that. We right? hired that out to a consultant who specialized in transportation. Then two thirds of the way through the project disappeared, and we had to hire another consultant to finish the job. This was all before any current staff were working for the city, but that's my understanding of what happened. So, what I can tell you about this is we will spend those dollars wisely and we will not overspend. That's what I can guarantee. Okay. Is there any question? I'm sorry. Go ahead, oh, please. Other questions on the street fund? I have a quick question. <coughs> and I know it's off task, but I just have to ask it real quick. So um, the sidewalks, I know that the sidewalks in front of people's houses are their responsibility. What, whose responsibility are the sidewalks on 3rd Avenue? Businesses. They, so the businesses, that, so are the property owners? I'm sorry. Uh, the, well, the property owner, whoever that is. Okay. Right? The, uh, whoever sorry, owns yeah, the, the building, owner. just just the same as a residence. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I said businesses, assuming that the business owned them. Okay. But it's Great. The property Thank you. Owner. Thank you. Just for, I just needed to know. Right. Other questions on the street fund? Are we looking at maybe having a uh, <coughs> bond for paving the streets? Because at our current rate, even if with the addition of the gas taxes, yours, I think it's, I read somewhere. 73 years worth of planning um, to, to pay for the current crop of laundry list of things we need to get fixed. Mm -hmm. By the time the 76 years is up, the stuff we've done today is going to be, or the stuff we is not on our list is going to be yeah. gone. Well, that's a very good point. You should bring that up because when I put that number together, I, I assume that the streets would not uh, wear and tear. So that 73 years is actually a uh, misnomer what's that it'd be a misnomer well it's a misnomer because it would probably be longer than that because within 20 years or five years we'd have to be going back and looking at the streets that we just repaired because we want to keep those maintained yeah but so to get the current it's we got to start with the baseline to get that baseline up to where we want them it would be 73 years at the current funding rate have we look, is, is there a bond option for that or is that not something we have not bond? looked at a bond I think Andy could probably talk to, to uh, you more about bonds I don't have the experience he probably does in, in government for getting bonds for this kind of thing yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think it goes back to one of the fundamental things that you know Lance mentioned earlier is you know, community deciding what service level you ultimately want and based on that service level you're able to find you know the folks that can tell you how much is it going to cost per year to maintain your street system and then you're going to go through a, a fairly exhaustive process and, and I think they've done a little bit of this preliminary type work of grading your streets there's just some streets that you're just going to have to let go most likely and come back later and deal with in order so you can save the street that would it's in good enough shape it's going to be efficient to get that taken care of uh, the transportation system plan will uh, i think touch on some of that stuff in in likely be a recommendation to get back into you know that street maintenance a plan and right now you really don't have a you know a, a a scientific <coughs> based you know plan that lays out what you should be spending annually to ultimately maintain your streets at a certain level and you've got uh, the pavement condition index type folks uh, you know I know uh, Keith has you know brought a you know a less costly type of program a number of cities have gone to that to ultimately you know identify you know what ultimately it's going to take to maintain a street and you know once you get I think what the pavement condition index gets below 70 the cost of maintaining that street just goes up you know uh, it, it's an escalating factor 
Um, you know, so you want to try and keep your street I think, you know, to most efficiently and effectively at a 70 or better. And you, I think you're well below that. My guess is you're probably in the 50 to 60 range on average. Mark. As a, Luke, uh, part of it's prioritizing expenditures. Skipping ahead, there's a million dollars for a poop dryer and a quarter million dollars for a poop dryer ventilator. You know, we'll get to that, Mark. Really, well, no, no, but that pays, the, the point is that pays roughly or overlays a couple miles of streets. Jordan Bridge, do we save Jordan Bridge or do we pave a couple blocks, six blocks of streets? But those That's, funds that you're talking about for the dryer are coming from sewer funds. You can't take sewer funds. Correct me if I'm wrong. Can I take sewer funds and pay for streets? <clears throat> Uh, the, the the most creative way to do that would be as you're you know un pulling up sewer line and replacing them and using you know, charging the sewer to patch the street when you're done, but you cannot take sewer dollars or water dollars or whatever and move them over into the street. With the exception, if you, you know, one way to get additional money would be you mention a bond. You can certainly go out for a bond. You know, list out the streets. Cities do that. You can raise your street fee. Cities have done that. You can pass the local gas tax. You've got that on the ballot. You may be able to get that done. Uh, you can transfer additional dollars out of your general fund if you had those. You presently don't. Uh, another uh, thing you may want to uh, look at is a franchise fee on your water or sewer utilities that in stormwater that you can transfer back to the street fund. Uh, that's something that is common now within the, you know, within Oregon and, and elsewhere in the country. So there's a variety of ways to ultimately get there, and you can, you know, chip and away. We're not going to get there tonight, right? Right. No. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Well, yes, I do, but it's for Andy. I'm, I'm sorry, no, Lance. No, it's it's hopefully helpful to, to you. If, like Lance is saying, we need this transportation system plan to the tune of upwards of 135,000 are we going to see in future budgets hey let's chunk out five ten grand a year here so that his department's not hit with another hundred thirty five thousand dollar chunk in a mysterious five to twenty years down the road are we going to set aside and actively budget in the future for in, updates yeah in, in some what you have this is one this isn't a street operations budget expense. You've got SDC monies that are coming in to pay this, and that's part of the overall okay. plan. So you've been charging SDCs, and a part of those SDCs you know, is an SDC type update <coughs> or a, a master plan type update. Uh, and far as long range planning, yeah, we'd be laying all this stuff out over a longer period of time, all the different projects, as well as you know, studies like this to make sure that you're set up financially to pay for these when they're when it's time. You just lump sum all those right now under SDC charges and hold them and pay them out departmentally, randomly as they need them, versus line item a savings for him. But, but like on the, our budget on page 89, we start to lay out our capital improvement schedule. I mean, I'd like to see this expanded to what your levels you're talking about as well. Okay, thank you. Well, the other quick question was, what is the design of contact time for disinfection of water leaving the waste treatment plant? Um, can I get to water, Mark? I, I'll be happy oh, to answer that. Let me get to get through the water fund, and I'll be happy to answer that. So we're we done with uh, street fund. All right, moving on. On our merry little way. Uh, excuse me, I got to get to my. Okay, these are funding uh, our FTEs. We have 4.3. We've actually reduced that 1.2 over the last several years. Um, it's pretty much similar to last year. This year, um, it was the second year that me, I've sent. Uh, our crews over to the Oregon Association of Water Utilities in Bend, Oregon. They have a statewide uh, conference over there and it's uh, drinking water from all over the state is brought there from all the municipalities in the cities uh, to have a taste test among, uh, during their conference. This is the second year that we have actually gone and we actually were deemed the best tasting surface water in Oregon, which is huge uh, from what I understand. I actually had one of the uh, 
representatives in my office last week, and he was quite impressed. He, he couldn't he couldn't elaborate to me enough what a prestigious this award this is. You know, I I really didn't recognize that, but apparently it's very prestigious. So we ought to be very proud of that. Last year we performed leak checks on the entire east side of the city. We prepared, uh, repaired all the leaks. I think we found 100, 100 CFS worth of leaks out of our water system, so that's saving us money. We uh, are installed, or just installed, 900 feet of 8-inch water line in Marion Street. We've uh, put in four higher fire hydrants, should be four fire hydrants, uh, and 23 service connections also <coughs> in the street project. Uh, we also funding to fully integrate uh, our water meters into radio read technology. We're about 350 short of being citywide, having those uh, radio meters. Strategic e uh, issues, complete the water meters uh, into radio technology to uh, be more efficient, save money. Uh, we could read all the meters within one, uh, within a four hour block versus two days of reading meters manually. So we're gonna save time and money there. Design of contact system at the treatment plant. This is what Mark referred to. That's, a, that's actually, uh, this is for the design of that, Mark. And that what that does is for the uh, disinfection of the water. Currently, we don't have enough time. We're right at the, the cusp of having not enough time before of, of treatment before we ship our water out into our sewer lines. We need to, uh, we need, water, our water, water lines. <laughs> what? He said sewer lines, I'm yeah. going to correct uh, you, water lines. We're not cross connecting, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we know where you're going. I was going to get just a little worried there. <laughs> just you know, it's 100 cubic feet a second of, of leaks. <laughs> anyway, going back to it, so as part of our disinfectant system, we are really close to not having enough time for treatment before mm -hmm. it goes out into our water lines so our, our citizens are drinking it. So we need this additional vessel. I don't know what that is. It could be a tank. Uh, our master plan calls for taking the tank from Schedule M, bringing it down to the treatment plant and using that. But that's a $600,000 bill. So what I'm, for the, what this, this is going to be for is hiring a consultant to look at that and determine maybe there's something much cheaper that we can do currently on our property. If we've got a pipe <coughs> down there, we might be able to just put pipes in, a network of pipes, and uh, and loop it around the, the uh, treatment plan. Uh, it'd be much cheaper. I'm not sure if that will work, but that's something that we're gonna look at, and that's one of the reasons we have this up there. What's Schedule M? Um, what is the street down there, Dan, that's off of, is that, that's not Evergreen, is it? Is that the big uh, green uh, thing off down south of town? It's south of town, it's right next to Norpac. I forget which road that is that goes down to it. It's a dead so end. Holly Street, Holly, isn't it? Holly, it's Holly, Holly, Holly and Water. Holly, 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 Holly and Water Street. Okay, right. so it's, it's a big Street. water tower that's down yeah. there. Okay. That is empty currently. Yeah. Okay. So what the plan was was to pick that up, cut it, take it down to the water treatment plant and use that, but it's a $600,000 estimated job. Hmm. So we're, we're, we want to look and see if there's something much cheaper to do. It sounds cheaper to pipe it there. <laughs> uh, you will, yeah, perhaps. Um, so getting back, short term, ensure funding is sustainable for including capital expansion. I think you heard Andy, we have one of the, the lowest water service uh, rates in the state. Um, so we need to make sure that uh, we continue to provide funding so we can in, uh, increase and uh, continue our capital expansion. <coughs> Long term, construct con uh, contact time down at the treatment plant, we just spoke about that. Uh, complete master plan priorities. Uh, Shaft Road is lacking uh, a 16 inch water line uh, currently to loop our entire city. Uh, right now it's a dead end line, uh, 16 inch line, which isn't very smart. Um, we need to be able to feed our citizens from all different directions to get water so we don't have to shut people down in blocks. Uh, so that is something part of our uh, master plan to uh, continue uh, to work towards. I have it budgeted this year to install 200 feet of that 16 inch water line. Uh, that's all we can afford, but I'm looking at piecemealing, you know, every year putting a couple hundred feet in and, and soon enough we'll have that 1600 feet and we'll be looped. In How place. many feet are we short? 1600 feet. 1600 feet. Yeah. Okay. I got lost in the 16 inches. Quarter mile. 16 inch pipe, we're 1600 feet okay. short of that's being it looped. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and find additional water source. Um, 
Right now we get all our water from the Sandy Am Water Control District Channel, uh, the main ditch or the uh, canal. Um, at some point in time, it'd be nice to be able to find an additional source of water. Um, so we're not solely reliant on the water control district. If that might be uh, uh, wells, or that might be a water gallery, or, or, or whatever, maybe we're pulling water completely out of the North Sandy Am River ourselves. I don't know. It's just something that we should probably be looking into as a city. It might not be for 10, 15, 20 years, but we need to at least look into it. Don't, don't we have a water valve that's tied in for the, the city, of, city of Salem that yeah, we can just right. crack it open just a little bit and well, that'll that, supplement us? And well, that is what we're currently doing, Chad. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, and that's right where the Schedule M tank is. That, that's where it's located. So I'm not saying we're going to go out and fund, put any money towards this. We're going to start looking into it. I'm an engineer. I can do that on my own time and not spend any money on that um, on hiring consultants. So. That's something that I'll be looking into in the long term here. Uh, challenges and opportunities. Continue effective and efficient management of the utility, best management practices, and uh, continue on an annual basis water system upgrades. Long term water quality, <coughs> supply and uh, treatment <coughs> capacity, and uh, continue to work with the North San Diego Watershed Council to support our watershed. Changes, uh, increase in 3% in our water rates, decrease in contract services, and decrease in contact, contract engineer. <coughs> Performance measures, uh, maintain sand filter water treatment plant, 44 miles of water line, uh, 35, 000, 35 million gallons of water treated and produced, 61 water meters, <coughs> 95 radiometers. You can see 900 feet of eight inch water line, 300 feet of 16 inch water. Mark, okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Lance, uh, on fire hydrants, just a, a thought. Do we ask the fire district to help us with, especially those new installations? No, we do not. We do that on ourselves or we have. This is a, a city project, so we're doing that ourselves. We hired the contractor to put those in, part okay. of our system, our new system. Okay, but primary, primarily those fire hydrants are for the, the fire, Fire department, aren't they? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, they use them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. We all get all right. what we do. Just a thought. Lance or Andy, looking at the uh, water fund budget, um, o OECD principal, uh, if you look at that line item, it ballooned up to $4,703,000 and change. That was um, it's on page uh, 64. That was a bond that got put in for building, or what was that? Uh, it's a bond that got paid off. Okay, we paid off that bond. What other... We I said, refinanced it. Well, we refinanced the bond, okay. What is our total level of indebtedness there now? Do you know for the water bond? It's in your financial audit. I don't think we have a copy of the audit. Yeah, it's around uh, $3.9 million, though. Bells. Thank you. Are we good to go, Mark? Can I? Yeah, no, I just. Uh, water fund capital contact time system. That's fifty thousand dollars for uh, a consultant to design something. This is imperative. This is not something that I can just uh, wait on. Um, if you guys want the disinfected water in your community, it's something that we need to do. Um, so this is money that needs to be spent, and it'll be well spent. 16-inch water line shaft road again. I'm trying to complete that loop, so our city's loop, so there won't be any citizens in our community that will get water shut off uh, because they only get water one direction. Is there any questions on the water fund? Uh, we eliminated one wastewater uh, treatment plant operator. 
They left. Uh, we determined that we didn't need to have an additional person or replace that person, so we just eliminated that position at the current time. Uh, accomplishments. It's been quite a year for our Public Works Department. Uh, we were awarded last fall the Pacific Northwest Clean Water Association West Central Section Wastewater Treatment Plan of the Year. That again is another prestigious award. We were up against bigger cities. Um, our guys did an outstanding job. There was a tour of several treatment plants in the state. Ours was one of them and we were deemed to have the, uh, the best treatment plan of the year. So. It's a tremendous award, and we should be uh, very proud of that. that there, well, we had $13 million improvement down there, and uh, it was well spent, and uh, we have a state-of-the-art state facility, <coughs> other than one minor issue. <coughs> we treated 713 million gallons of sewage in 2016-17, clean televised 2.56 miles of sewer lines, repaired 21 manholes, designed and constructed a 24-inch force main uh, from Ida to the treatment plant. That's actually going to be, it was designed, uh, it's out to bid currently. The bid opening is on Friday. I'll be taking it to council, hopefully, if we get a good bid on Monday. And uh, it's to be constructed uh, by mid-August, uh, I believe it is. But it's uh, a 24-inch force main. This is a priority one uh, capital improvement in our master plan. Um, so we will be, you'll see here later, it'll be, it's part funded by, uh, it could be part funded by our SDC counts as well as our sewer fund. Uh, we installed telemetry in our sewer lift stations so our folks can uh, monitor those lift stations with laptops rather than having to come out in the middle of the night and see if there's why, why we have a, an alarm going off. <coughs> Um, they can make sure they can adjust levels um, and so forth so we installed telemetry in our lift stations and we added a third pump which is another component to the master plan the sewer master plan that we met this year last year we did the fern ridge we took the fern ridge lift station offline it added some more sewer to the mill creek pump station we needed a third pump so we could pump that sewer down to the water treatment plant and now we're adding that 24 inch force main so all that flow can get to the treatment plant without surcharging manholes in the middle of Ida Street. So that system will be complete. One of the last components of our master plan will be increasing the size of the sewer line going up Ida Street and start working our way up into the city to reduce surcharging and backflows into properties. Strategic issues Funding, it's always a, it's a, it's always a short-term issue. Uh, funding of capital improvements. Uh, reduce I&I, &I. that's a huge issue. Um, we get a, it's a huge issue with sublimity. We get a lot of I&I &I from sublimity. There's not too much we can do about that, unfortunately, at the current time, but we have our own problems with I&I, and, &I, and that's one of the reasons we have our maintenance programs every year to go and try to repair those uh, problems. Long-term, uh, Replace biosolids dryer. I know Mark you'll want to talk about this, but let me finish this first. Find odor control remedy for the treatment plant. Um, we have problems down there with severe odors. Um, and reduce I and I. Continue to work on the sewer master plan priorities. The biosolids dryer, I should probably hit that baby right there. When we had this $13 million plant uh, redesign, I was not here, I want to point that out, okay? <laughs> um, but when they did design it, um, the design wasn't very good. They offered, they, they opted to buy a, a dryer that had never been used before, very little. Um, that dryer, the company that fabricates and makes that dryer has gone out of business. They're no longer around. The dryers jumped. Wilsonville has problems with it. Uh, they're continually having fires in it, as we are. They are permanently staffed by CH2 engineers, CH2M Hill engineers. They're very well qualified and they're having nothing but problems with that dryer. We have the same dryer here and we have operators trying to maintain that. We just spent $40,000 trying to refab <coughs> portions of that dryer this last week because it caused a fire for like the fifth time. 
causing a fire in a, a, a treatment plant dryer is not a great thing, um, as you can imagine, it's so toxic. Um, so we're trying to maintain it. We're trying to spend our dollars to maintain this boat anchor that we happen to have down there. But I think it's smart in the long term that we at least uh, we, we, we used to open the discussion of we may have to replace that thing. Uh, and that's why it's there. Which you know, leads to, so for those who didn't see it, the replacement cost for the dryer is roughly $1 million? Correct. And the dust control unit for the same dryer is roughly a quarter million dollars? Um, but that may be scratched, Mark, because the reason we have the problem with the odor right now is because of the dryer. Yeah, well, they're both the budgeted. type of the dryer. They're both budgeted. That's correct. Yeah. You budget so, high. I budget low. Yeah. Well, that doesn't matter. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Dryers. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that you budgeted wrong. I'm saying you budget high. A little yeah. bit. And then if you hit low, you're happy. If you budget low and you miss, just, you get skinned. Yeah, it's a good point, Luke. But, but, you know, if it's a quarter million, that's a lot of money. That's, that's five, 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 seven more city blocks. It's basically. a very expensive process getting rid of your guys' waste. Yeah, it has to get, get that. It's, um, the other thing I noticed in the uh, total requirements of the sewer fund budget, and uh, the sixteen seventeen estimated was down from five point seven to two point nine million, but next year it rises and proposed to six point three million, um, and a quarter million, one hundred thousand for the dryer, or a million for the dryer. The dryer? I'm not sure. What is your question? I, how come it? How come it, it? How come it goes from two point nine to six point three? For what? What exactly are we talking about? Uh, I don't have my numbers here, Mark. So your I'll, sewer I'll, fund budget requirements. Under total requirements. Total requirements. Bottom line. Two point nine to six point three. I don't have my numbers. I'd have to look at them. The two point nine reflects the expected expenditures for this year. Mm -hmm. What was budgeted was five point seven. <coughs> So we only spent half of what we budgeted? That's what this is showing. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. That is correct. Okay. Because some of the budgeted work didn't get done and probably is reflected in next year's budget. The well, what didn't get done? Uh, that's, me, well, that's a good question. The 24 inch uh, force main, mm -hmm. it won't be constructed and completed until after this fiscal year. It was budgeted this last fiscal year. I won't have it all done. I'll probably spend about $100,000 by the time the contractor starts. Yes, so that's five hundred thousand dollars that's being that, that wasn't spent. Uh, another three hundred fifty thousand dollars for plant improvements. We were supposed to uh, replace the turbo blower, but we spent a little bit too much time and money replacing and uh, working on this dryer. So, so the, we didn't have time to do that. The dryer's a million. The hopper's eighty-five. Dust controls a quarter million. And all, all of these, also, I just want to point out, are all future. Are those capital improvement projects? Those are cap all capital improvement projects okay. for, for. Those are a five. That's a five-year estimated plan. Okay. So I, I mean, I, I'm happy to talk about our five-year plan and even further, but I just want to make sure we're, we're clear in tonight's budget meeting. We're talking about stuff that's not in the budget and, and won't be for it's several priorities. Years. That's all. That's a city council thing. Yes, Mr. Mayor, sir. Lance, is it? Does someone build a good biosolids dryer? I mean, this. Well, that's a good question, Mr. Mayor, and that's something we're going to have to find out, sir. I'm okay. not a. I am. I'm going to be right. When I interviewed for this position, I told him right up. I am not a wastewater <laughs> engineer. Those are special types of engineers. I am not one. I can converse with them, and I'm going to find one that I think is going to do well for the city. What I can tell you is this thing was a boat anchor to begin with, yeah. and it continues to be a boat anchor, and we're throwing money at it. Yeah. And at some point in the future, we're going to have to look to replace it to try to save the city <coughs> some money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. we've kind of known that. We've known that. that it, I'm, I know you're aware yeah. of it. The first year or so, we couldn't even run it. Yeah. We were producing Class B biosolids, and we had a Class A facility. Hmm. OK. Thanks. Hmm. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm continuing on here. <laughs> Short term, continue with I and I reduction. That's something that we try to work on every year. I think if you're out driving about the city currently, you'll see a truck by the name of Michael's uh, Sewer on the side of it. They are TVing lines and they are maintaining or they are fixing lines that they find that need uh, to be fixed or repaired. Maintain sludge dryer to provide Class A biosolids. We are a Class A facility. We have a permit. We spent a lot of time and money to get from DEQ to become a Class A biosolids facility. Uh, that's what that dryer was promised to bring us, and that's what we want to continue to be. Uh, excuse me. 
Find ways to make the sewer department more efficient, and efe uh, effective and efficient. Uh, we continue to strive to do that. <coughs> Long term, replace sludge dryer again, reduce I and I, continue to find ways to reduce costs at the treatment plant. Mark, I know you're concerned with that, but I'm assure you we are always trying to reduce costs down there. Uh, sewer fund change we rate, uh, we increased 3%. Natural gan uh, gas expenditure rose by 11%. Electricity rose by 13%. System improvements costs were spread out to 2017-18 because of that 24-inch force main I just spoke about. It was budgeted for the last fiscal year. We designed it. It won't be completely constructed until the next fiscal year. And again, this is a sewer master plan project to help reduce surcharging of the sewers. And the plan improvement expenditure was decreased by 71% because we did not have the time to uh, replace the turbo blower as we budgeted for last year. And we are trying to budget for a new dryer, so we're eliminating some projects. <coughs> Performance measures. <coughs> Operate and maintain 33 miles of sanitary sewer collection lines for sanitary sewer lift stations. Operate and maintain a level three wastewater treatment plant system and collection system. Sewer fund capital, we got plan, improvement, uh, plan improvements of $165,000. Uh, next year, I'm looking at, uh, this will be the, probably the last phase of the Mill Creek force main pump, <laughs> included pump, taking Fern Ridge offline. We have to increase the size of the flume, which measures the flow of the sewer coming into the headworks at the treatment plant. It is undersized, it was designed for the plant 10 years ago. With this increased sewage coming through here, we need to upsize that. That's what that money is budgeted for. It'll cost significantly less, um, but we have some other improvements that we need to do to make that place more efficient and functional for the employees down there as well. 24 inch force band project, 600,000 uh, to complete that project. Again, that was forwarded on most of that from last year. Is there any questions regarding the sewer fund? I think we're good there. All right, moving on. Stormwater fund. We have a half a worker out there uh, that takes care of our stormwater. That would be all the collection systems. Uh, this last year would come some of the accomplishments that we had. We purchased 13 acres of uh, land for a regional detention facility. That would be the Lambert uh, Detention Pond. We spoke about that. That's just west, east of Kendall Way between the middle school. Uh, that is part of our master plan, and that's also a component of our memo of understanding that we crafted or attorneys crafted with the Santa Ana Water Control District. So we're trying to meet those requirements as well. Install two pollution control manholes and one pollution control base, catch basin last year, um, or last summer, fall. Uh, that again is a uh, memo of understanding item. Currently we are constructing one pollution control manhole and one pollution control catch basin, which is also a memo of understanding item. And we've cleaned uh, catch basins to increase capacities throughout the city. Uh, we just we are finishing the design uh, of the regional defense detention facility. Uh, will probably be the design will probably be done within the next 45 to 60 days. At that point, we'll have to find funding mechanisms to construct the entire thing. Uh, we don't have the money completely to construct it all, so we'll probably be doing that in a phased approach. Uh, community education for stormwater quality and detention issues. Um, that's an ongoing uh, requirement. Uh, it's part of our D TMDL permit also from DEQ that we have some outre outreach programs with the community. Each year we go out and we have uh, ISERV uh, go out and paint our catch basins. Uh, we try to meet with the schools in the fall uh, to uh, bring them up to understanding of our environment and uh, how those play a role. Um, we continue to work to meet the memo of understanding commitments with the San Diego Water Control District. Uh, and we will be looking at, <coughs> excuse me, the stormwater master plan will be our next master plan to be updated. Again, they're all 13, 14 years old. 
they all need to be updated because they're just severely out of date and we need to have new we need new information uh, to know exactly where we're putting things and if we even need to put things one of the issues we have currently with <coughs> these gentlemen right here is the current <coughs> stormwater master plan shows de these detention facilities all over the city where they won't they you can't build them because there's high groundwater but these gentlemen here are mandatory they want these detention facilities built and we just don't have the land for it so this updated stormwater facility master plan uh, will help that and help us find us new places to build these facilities uh, long-term develop preserve drainage infrastructure work to meet stormwater master plan priorities and continue to work with the San Diego water control district our relationship has really gotten a lot better and I'm happy for that uh, we're actually joined on some different projects currently Challenges and opportunities to continue to work with the development community to promote stormwater standards, maintain existing stormwater infrastructure, and use BMPs. Long-term uh, stormwater management in an efficient, cost-effective manner. Continue to work with the community <coughs> to find ways to work together to find solutions for stormwater issues. We have a lot of we have a lot of groundwater in this community, so it poses a, uh, a unique challenge for us. But I think we can uh, meet those challenges. Rate increase, uh, the changes for this year, rate increase of 3%. System maintenance and operation expenditure increased by 43%. And that is because we never had a fund before this last year. And so our fund increased from, I think, $40,000 to $80,000 or whatever. So it shows a huge increase. I was asked that earlier today, and I didn't have an answer for it until I went back and looked, and <laughs> that is the reason why. Uh, decrease in capital projects expenditure by 15, 56 percent. Uh, we just don't have the money, so we decrease that capital those projects. Performance measure, measures: clean and maintain all stormwater collection systems, including storm lines, culverts, stitches, <coughs> detention, and water quality facilities, and <coughs> catch basins and manholes. Uh, stormwater capital. Uh, we have pollution control manhole uh, we're going to put in next year for 35000 it will be much less, so hopefully we can get it some more cat spacings in installed. Depending on where you put them and the time of year, they can range from anywhere from $9,000 to $28,000 to put in one of those manholes. That's why I have $35,000 in there. System improvements, $10,000, that's basically uh, ditches, pipes, so forth, culverts. So a total of cost of, uh, for capital improvements for your storm system in this entire city is $45,000. Questions on uh, Questions. storm water? I put you guys all to sleep. All right. That is unusual of me. <laughs> Public Works admin. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see these oh, there they are. There earlier. I skipped it. It's a Did short you just one. Put these in here, Andy. Slipped them right in while you were talking. They weren't in there. <laughs> That's all right. We go ahead. We we had these in there. Oh, I didn't <laughs> see them this afternoon. All right, we we went through this presentation earlier today, and I didn't see them, so wasn't quite ready for this. But um, increased by inflation, engineers' news record. Um, ENR, Dan and I belong to that. Uh, we just looked at the beginning of May. They increased the cost of that at 3.7% this last year, so our SDC rates will be increased by 3.7%. <coughs> uh, revenue is expected to be greater this year due to our increased development. We have 45 lots or so being constructed in wildlife meadows. They will soon be planted and soon be built upon, so we'll be bringing money in from those that development as well as the development to the uh, west of there. Hopefully by the end of the year we'll be pulling money out of that as well. Um, transfer to the operating funds, there's that $25,000 for the Putney property master plan, $135,000 to uh, the streets master plan, and an estimated $100,000 budgeted for final analysis of impact. Of? Impact of what? Sewer. Sewer. Of the sewer, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was, so we went there at parks, streets, sewer. Uh, potential uses. We need to, uh, we have, when we have these developments going on in our community right now, we are having 
that those developments occur on Shaft Road. Um, Shaft Road is an arterial road. It also has a 16 inch water line in it. So when development occurs along that, we here in the city of Staten have in our code that we will reimburse a developer a certain amount of money over and above what their development projects onto our system. So it's an arterial road, it's 48 feet wide or 50 feet wide supposedly. A local road is all they need for, to support their development which is 36 feet. So that additional 14 feet of road, we reimburse them for it but we ask them to develop it. Those funds come out of our SDC fees. Um, Roger Roberts constructed 300 feet of 16 inch water line for us this year. He only needs an 8 inch water line to uh, supply his subdivision. So we have him put the 16 inch water line in and we pay him the difference between a 16 inch and an 8 inch. That's what those fees are. Mm -hmm. So those are the reimbursement to developers for qualified projects that come out of our SDC <coughs> fees or funds. Funds accumulated for uh, future projects as well as I believe uh, Andy suggested. Um, we have a couple of projects coming up in the next few years. Kindle Way is a collector street. Um, I'm having that designed currently to collector street standards. I imagine in the next <coughs> couple of years we'll have that design or not designed but constructed to a collector street. All those funds will come out of SDC funds from the uh, transportation SDCs. Um, so that's what those are used for. What's a collector street? Kindle Way. No, I understand Kindle Way, but what does collector street mean? Uh, you have local streets. Local streets channel into bigger streets. Bigger streets get into, okay, so okay. arterial road is the biggest. Yeah. Or a freeway, but yeah. shaft road goes to a smaller road. It's called a collector. Okay. Kindle Way is a collector. It takes, it takes local roads, channels and funnels them into a bigger road, which is a collector, which funnels into shaft, which is bigger. Okay. So it's it's Kindle way, it's a collector. Um, any questions with our SDC funds? Moving on. Oh, I don't know, I'll wait for you to say Please, that. public <laughs> word. <laughs> Construction fund. This is a new one on me too, but I'll go through this. Unless you want to take this, Andy, I don't care. Oh, it's care. the last page. Okay, so this is a carryover project, state grant funded. We got $1.544 million from the state for stormwater improvements in the city of state. Where's the set? It's the last page. It's the last page. It's, the last right page. it's, one it's out of order. Go clear to, clear to the very back of your book. Almost very last page. Okay, so again, going back, uh, the city of Staten was granted through lottery dollars $1.544 million for, to improve our stormwater system here in the, the city. Um, with that, we purchased the property for the Kindle, or the uh, Putney, I'm sorry, the Lambert Detention Facility. <laughs> Um, and the Putney property, which has uh, detention capacity in both of those, so that's where our regional detention facility will be. Um, those have been purchased. We have those on the books. Of that $1.544 million, we have a current balance of $366,000 of that. Um, this phase one of the construction, of the, the construction of the detention facility, which I anticipate having that started and completed by this summer, uh, $550,000. We have 366 remaining, so we need to come up with the remainder. We're going to ask the developer of a contribution of $80,000. Um, and then we have 50000 for design, 500000 550, So uh, This $180,000 will be local. Andy, you want to explain that a little bit? Or can you? Or... I don't want to put yeah, it's spot. 50k coming from SDCs, 50k coming from developer contribution, and then the general fund will fill the gap, and that's based on what uh, Lance is able to ultimately put together at the end. And the money coming from the general fund will be repaid at some future date from SDCs. And so you can see the phase one cost, uh, 550 thousand dollars. Those are estimated costs. Public work. Um, this is my 
the staff here. Um, we have, what do we have down there? Three, three FTE employees, three FTEs. What we've changed is we uh, eliminated an engineering tech position that was on the books for several years that we haven't had. We just eliminated that. It's under evaluation. If uh, things continue to be very busy with our development, we may look to add that in the future. But until then, we've taken that off the books. Uh, process 47 building permits, process 44 right of way permits. Uh, we also, um, it's not on here and I should have put that on there. We have reviewed <coughs> at least six site development permits in the city over the last year, which is Wildlife Meadows, the Vet Clinic, Max Credit Union, Ixtapa. Uh, the list goes on. I should have had them on there, but I, I was frozen that day. Um, Strategic issues provide excellent cost-effective customer service, uh, provide capital project management. Uh, currently, we manage like the uh, Marion Street project. We, well, we manage all the projects that go on, but we actually are out there inspecting 100% of the time for all uh, city projects and part-time for private projects. So we have one other engineer, that's what he does all day long. So anything that gets done in the office, it's, it's myself and him trying to swing in and get it done. So, um, so continue to strive for transparency in Public Works Department. Continue to make Public Works Department more user-friendly to customers. Uh, Long-term provide projects that improve the city's livability. That's very important. We all see it that way. Continue to look for ways to make the Public Works Organization more flexible and responsive to changes and demand, changing demands. Short-term performing project management on Jetter's Way. Again, that's going to be have a bid opening this Friday. Uh, we'll be taking it to council on Monday. I hope to have that started by the first week of June. And again, that will go on throughout the summer until that's done. P pr update Public Works forms. We have a number of forms that we look at annually um, to update, try to improve our standards, to make them more user-friendly. Uh, make our website more user-friendly, that kind of thing. Continue to look for ways to make our office visit more user-friendly. I think uh, we've tried in the last couple of years since I've been here, um, we've tried to improve the uh, usage of our department. We've changed, we've rearranged the, uh, the office quite a bit. We've got new office furniture. Uh, we bought a computer monitor so people can come in and see their properties right there at the counter versus having to come in Dan's office or my office. So. We're trying to make it the, the experience a little bit more user friendly, and I think uh, you know we've got a good response with it. Uh, employee development and training. Uh, personally, I like to have a very well trained staff. That's either in public works, streets and water, or the treatment facilities. I like the best personnel that I can possibly get. It makes our job better, and I think it's reflective on uh, the awards that we received the last couple of, or the last year. Increase partnerships with the community, strive to improve the effectiveness of our services. We're striving to do that daily. Changes, eliminate engineering tech position, and we've talked about that. Uh, a $75,000 <laughs> transfer to provide portions for funding for the economic development study. That's near and dear to my heart. Uh, administrative activities. Manage intake and issuance of all building permits. Manage and intake and issue of all right-of-way permits and applications. Manage all site development permit reviews. Uh, inspect work performed by city-owned right-of-ways and parks and manage department and project budgets. And that is it for Public Works Administration. I'll take any questions you have. This is more political than, than boots on the ground, but I was keenly and am keenly disappointed that we couldn't find a way to finish Hollister between first and third. Okay, that's. I mean, they, I guess they did their part, but th there was no, no actually, way. Actually, the city contributed to that, Mr. Mayor. Really? Yes, we did. Okay. What little money we had left, we we did. Mm -hmm. It's too bad we can't find a some kind of fund though that would I, you know that would have been a perfect one to fix. I think that's something that, you know, you can bring up to council, maybe we can increase funding for streets. Well, it, yeah, it would have kept a neighborhood happy, too. And, I yeah. understand that. Okay, thank it's you. It's a tough position I stand in some days. I have to hear those from neighborhoods calling me and asking me why I can't 
fix their sidewalks and all the streets in front of their houses yeah. and I don't have the money, I don't get the money. So I do what we best we can and uh, hopefully in a future, uh, a near future, we can go out there and we can pave the rest of that road. But today we couldn't. Well, it seemed like an opportunity. It, there's always opportunities down the road. Yeah, okay. Please. Any other questions? You have the keys. <laughs> well, yeah, are we ready to move on? Yeah. Okay, that's all I need to know. I'm ready to go do it. <laughs> Thank you for all your uh, support. <laughs> Attention. Yeah. On the facilities fund, you ready? Mm -hmm, please. Yeah. Consistent with last year, we're charging internally administration and police 65 cents a, a month uh, per square foot. Uh, that money uh, is going into the facilities fund to pay for the uh, the, the basic uh, care of the buildings and really to accumulate dollars ultimately for another solution. Uh, there's also uh, transfers <coughs> from your water, sewer, street, and library uh, funds to pay for the personnel associated there. That personnel uh, last year was budgeted around $23,000, about 0.3 FTE. That's gone down, and therefore their their uh, costs are going down. Uh, what's budgeted here for you is a carryover of the facility needs assessment. I think uh, staff is uh, pretty close to having that uh, RFP ready to go out. Uh, same thing with the $100,000 from the uh, this fund to the Jordan Bridge. That was a carryover. And then the balance, uh, about $475,000 is just going to you know, continue to grow until you have a plan for you know, new buildings or what have you, whatever that may may ultimately come out of that needs assessment. Uh, glad to address any questions you have on the facilities fund. Yeah. Uh, your vehicle replacement fund, you call last year, uh, went through a process and suspended any transfers from any of the funds into the vehicle um, uh, replacement fund has gone through and, and you looked at the analysis going back to 2005 is the records where you know it's easy to, to get the information out of the uh, computer system and able to evaluate what was being bought and when it was being bought and how much money went in etc and ultimately what you know as we talked about it internally is you know how to deal with this I think the at the end of the day it's going to be far more transparent to the organization, to the people managing it, to the, you, you as elected folks and budget committee people, that those purchases for vehicle and so forth come out of the fund that they're they're ultimately paying for. Putting it into this particular fund, I think there's a loss of where the dollars came from, when should they be replaced, how should they be replaced. It becomes a little less, I won't say a little, quite a bit less accountable in terms of what's going on and, and the focus on you know, making sure you're, you're doing a re replacement requirement on a regular routine basis. And so we've took half the money, you know, basically one point, or it's got a total of 1.2 million with the receivable uh, number from stormwater. Uh, we took half of that and put it back into the funds. The other half, it is, we looked at three different alternatives here. The city has an actuarial liability on its city retirement uh, uh, fund of approximately $650,000 with the changes that were approved back in October. So 400000 of that could go back to those purposes. Uh, we could transfer the full amount, all of it, back to the funds where it originated and go ahead and just close the fund or we can go ahead and retain what's left and just have, you know, redesignate this as an emergency reserve type of fund. You know, I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer with any of those three options, and, and we don't have to make a decision tonight. We can just keep it as a contingency and make a decision, have a council, you know, spend a little bit more time on it, you know, this coming year in terms of where, you know, where they might like to put it. Right now, we're recommending, and you know, through uh, Keith's budget, propose to go ahead and move half of it back to the funds. Uh, and this would be the net dollars that were available. So, you know, for example, if sewer put in a million dollars and spend 800, 200, or half of that would be going back to them 100,000. 
So it's one of the choices to get rid of this fund? <clears throat> yes. That, yeah, that's basically what would happen with options one and two. So is uh, the money that you're showing here is transferring back to the individual funds, is that already being accounted in the current budgets that were just shown for projects? Yeah, it's being it's shown as a resource in each of the funds. Each fund, so yeah. if we, okay. Yeah, if you said, well, we really don't want to transfer even the 600, we'd like to just keep it all here. Right. We'd be we'd pulling money out. Of money out. That's, what I was, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, we'd so be pulling money out. That would change what you can do. But it's a totally, it's a slush fund. I wouldn't use that term. I would say it's just, it lacks accountability. Okay, I mean, it, you know, thank you. It's, you know. well, it's, a, it, it's retained worse. as an emergency reserve fund, but it's called a vehicle replacement fund. That's mm -hmm. the, it was never. We, yeah, we would yeah, change I, the name of it if you, yeah, if we yeah. went that direction. So, but, but currently, it was set up for replacing vehicles as someone needed them. For example, the street sweeper goes out at the tune of seven hundred thousand dollars. Now you've got six hundred set aside for it, or four hundred left set aside for it, right? Theoretically, if you were transferring enough money from street to do that type of thing, but you'll have that much left in it. Right. But that after your 600 goes out right but that needs to be in that department's budget to replace the street sweeper yeah right? ideally we would yeah as yeah. we go through and put together these longer range financial plans we'd be laying out all the different pieces of equipment particularly expensive things like street sweepers and putting those in when you would acquire those and, and making sure that we were so appropriately Fun. Basically, the option one, reduce, or option three, retain, well, not retain, but option one specifically actually almost steals that money from those departments because they put it in there for the uh, expectation of at some point getting a vehicle out of that fund. The trade-off is, is that their personnel costs are going to go down because... You know, okay, so they'll have an actual... It's the equivalent of giving it back to them, but it's determining where they're going to spend it, not giving it back to them directly for right. free usage. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So it's it's a policy choice as to whether you want to you know, reduce your pension liability on a longer term basis, or just get the money back. And what's the interest rate on the pension liability? Well, well the, liability. yeah. I mean, the, you've got a negative amortization occurring with an unfunded liability like that, and you know it's. Seven, whatever. I think the guaranteed rate of return is in the six and a half percent range. There's no other investment the city's got right now that's earning six and a half percent. So, I said put it there. Uh, yeah. So it's not a bad place at all to put it, but it's also I know you know difficult when you have these other things that are right in front of you that you know you need to you know you yeah. want to deal with. And street sweepers only cost about 150. Other questions on this section? Okay, Andy, I do have one more for for clarification. Sure. So the way you propose this currently on the budget, mm -hmm. your 1.019, you're going to move 600,000 of it out back to the general fund, blah, et cetera, et cetera, like you just described, which leaves you with 419,000 sitting in a fund currently labeled vehicle replacement fund, correct? Perfect. That's all I need to know. Okay, I want to take a moment and thank, number one, all the committee members for yeah. sticking this out. I really appreciate it. I think it's a good project. Uh, but number two, I want to thank all the department heads for putting together all the hard work that goes into a budget. I serve on several around the community, so I know how hard you guys have worked. If you'd like, I would like it open it up now to the committee members for discussion, questions, or I will entertain anything else. Somebody would like to throw out any motions, changes, like motions. Like a motion to approve this budget? Any of those motions that you yeah. would like. Second. Yeah. So it's been moved and seconded to approve this budget as submitted. To be sent to council for drop. Right. Mm -hmm. Would, uh, Alyssa, could you poll everyone for a, an official vote here? Sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> we'll hold our name tags up. I think I know everybody. <laughs> Councilor Russell? Yes. 
Mr. West? Yes. Councillor Glidewell? Yes. Mr. Cranston? Yes. Ms. Uh, Councillor Cronquist? Yes. Mr. Kingsley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. Mr. Humphreys? Yes. Motion passes 8 to 0. Excellent. Do we need to read some specific verbiage on oh, so we consider we the consider tax stuff? Right, the tax, consider the tax, levy, and then consider right, the the tax levy, levy, that's what I was looking for. So, basically just so do I have a motion on uh, the tax levy portion? I'll motion that we pass that. It's been moved. Do I have a second? <coughs> Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Do I have a motion on the uh, local option levy of 0.06? 0.6. 0 0.6. Thank you. Point <laughs> 0. 0. 0.6. <laughs> it's been moved. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that one passes. Moved. And we've moved on the last one. The second. state revenue fund, and it's been seconded by Scott. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Being adjourned. Thank you all so much. <laughs>